What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to our E3 2019 predictions for Nintendo. We're basically going to be talking about Nintendo's meeting for 2019 at E3 that's taking place June 11th. It's a Tuesday, as usual. And I wanted to call some people in for this one because it. I wrote down the list of all the games, and there are a lot. And that means that there are probably going to be some surprises there as well next to all of these games that they've already told us about but let me uh let me go down the list here let's see on my on my list here we have uh scott the waz actually is joining us today scott how are you hello i'm great i love nintendo brand video games yes. so i can't wait to uh <laughs> to talk about them very cool we have uh rogers base joining us hey what's going on everybody happy to finally be a part of spawn wave <laughs> yes thanks for you made the rounds all around the world now you're I you're did. stopping by, so I appreciate it. I did. Yeah, last stop before the E3 hype train actually pulls into the station. Yes, it's exciting. Uh, Kevin Kenson. Kevin, what's up, man? Yo, uh, you know, doing good. I've done zero preparation for today, so looking forward to just making it up as I go along. You know, oh, we're just, good times. We're just talking We're just talking video games, man. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> uh, Jordan. Jordan Fringe, what's up, man? Hey, all. Fringe here. <laughs> And, uh, okay. <laughs> we're gonna, <laughs> that, that was, we're gonna be going with identity theft. Okay, this is ridiculous. We gotta and start then, it off positive. And then we have uh, Nate, Direct Feed Games, the the cynical one of the of the cast here. You always need one. Yeah. <laughs> you just you just sound like you're 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 just already annoyed. <laughs> the tone I, I, is just. I, bl I blame Jordan for that. Oh man. I'm uh, sorry. You're not sorry. Not really. So, do we want to go down the list of uh, games that are already confirmed for 2019 from Nintendo? I have a, a couple here. Zelda Link's Awakening, Animal Crossing, Luigi's Mansion 3, Town, and then Damon X Machina. Now, we have Pokemon Sword and Shield and Mario Maker 2, which, well, Pokemon Sword and Shield is getting their own direct next week. Mario Maker 2 has already had its direct, so... I assume neither of those are going to take up a ton of their pre-recorded direct, and we'll see them mostly in the treehouse. But then we also have Fire Emblem Three Houses, Marvel Ultimate Alliance Three, Astral Chain, and we assume maybe Shin Megami Tensei. Although that'll probably be uh, that could fall to 2020. So I, I want to ask you guys to get started. What do you think Nintendo is going to open this presentation with? Do you think a not... Smash Brothers character. Oh, Ooh, I, th yeah. I think it's gonna be. I think we're gonna get the Erdrick because everybody's been talking about Dragon Quest characters being in Smash. There was that data mine earlier in the year, and uh, I do feel like that's going to happen at this year's show. That they're gonna kick off with the Erdrick trailer, showing off the character, and then saying, "Hey, by the way, this character is available today." People are going to say, oh, this is really exciting. You know, this is a character that's cool, but it's obviously much more exciting for the Japanese audience than it is like people in North America where Dragon Quest really isn't as big. And then I think at the very end of the direct, we'll get the announcement of the third Fighter Pass character, which will be a Microsoft collaboration character. I, I like the idea of starting it with uh, with a Smash Bros character. You think they'll do the? Do you think they'll do the Smash opening logo right away, or do you think they'll just cut yes. to a CG trailer? Oh, yeah. I think they'd have that. Yeah. I, I like that. I like that new logo thing they have now with with Ultimate, where it kind of cuts open and everything gets you ready for See, it. I actually prefer the Smash Four one because that looked a little cooler because it had Same the here. flames and stuff. Oh, yeah, flames. this one this one seems a little too minimalistic, but it's still you know. And they also don't use it a ton with the trailers this time around. They uh, they kind of use it. They uh, they only really use it if you know for a fact it's a Smash Brothers character because uh, they didn't do that with Joker. Uh, they didn't do that with. Um, uh, they they just didn't do it a lot. They did that with uh, Simon and Richter. Uh, they didn't do that with Isabel. Uh, so it's kind of random when they use that. Uh, but actually, now that I think about it, I don't know if they're going to use that intro <laughs> for the direct. They might just open it up, and you might be like, "Oh, this is Dragon Quest Eleven or something," and then it turns out to be Erdrick, which, right. in my opinion, is the driest possible DLC character they could announce. Uh, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not super. I like. I'm okay with the Dragon Quest rep. I think Dragon Quest is like a super. It it's a big enough series and it's an iconic enough series to be in smash brothers but uh for a dlc character when we just got joker from persona and then we could get like a microsoft character it's a little like mm, like i'd rather this be a part of the base roster but uh it, you know it's definitely a cult classic kind of choice like it's yeah. it's a little outside i think part of the way they alleviate that a little bit is by uh having an alternate costume based on the current dragon quest 11 protagonist not just definitely yeah. Available. oh yeah um 
And just as, as the whole idea of like whether or not they open the show with this or not, if they open with it, I think it's going to be a cold open. Like we're going to think it's either more trailer info or just whatever. And then it's the reveal of, hey, this character is being added. I honestly think more likely they're going to hard open with whatever the main focus game is going to be the season. And then the sort of one more thing reveal. I don't know if we're going to see like multiple DLC character passes announced. Mm. Um, see, I kind of feel like E3 is the time of the year where if you have some really major character to show off, like now's the time to do it. And I we already think... know that the fighter pass is ending like uh, February 2020, right? So if we're yeah. imagining Joker came out, then we got like two months. June would be the right time to drop another character. Then two months, another character comes out. I think they could easily announce the third character, but then drop the second character, the Dragon Quest character, day of. My, yeah. my only issue with that kind of logic is that, like, I think this is going to be something I probably say a lot during this. Uh, <laughs> I think Nintendo doesn't care about E3 as much as a lot of people think they do. Mm. Uh, they rely on their directs a lot to control their news flow as it goes by. So I think we're more likely going to see character by character announcements as time passes instead of multiple at one point. Because even with like, you know, the reveal of Piranha Plant, they waited until VGAs to reveal Joker. You know, they could have done Joker right. back then to make pipe, but no, they waited. Uh, so I think if we get. Uh, DLC pack two announced. I don't think we're going to see three yet because I think they want to keep it one announcement at a time to keep the hype flowing each time. Mm. Yeah, well, I think they at least like I think I think they still do care about E3 more than a lot of other companies, like more than Sony, just because like sure. when uh, when they barely had anything, all they had was Breath of the Wild in 2016. They still went crazy during that E3 like they decked out their booth like in like insanely well. And, uh, you know, they still had like a lot of little announcements and they did streams throughout the entire week. And, uh, you know, this year they're doing all these invitationals. They're doing the Smash Brothers Splatoon and uh, Mario Maker. And then they're doing uh, this direct and then still Treehouse. So I think it's still important to them. It's just obviously not as important as it used to be. Like it used to be like you would hold everything until E3. And now they're kind of like, oh, you know, you know damn it, next month, you know, who cares? Just throw that out there. <laughs> <laughs> like, so with that, I think I think there's potential that uh, they might open. I think there is. It's very likely they might open with a DLC character for Smash Brothers, or they could go the 2015 route and they could just have an entirely separate like Smash Brothers presentation for E3. But I don't think that would be wise. I think that would just bulk up the direct and make that way better. Yeah. But uh, you know, I think there is also potential that they'll open up with a random new game because who who saw Damon X Machina coming uh, last year? <laughs> yeah. So I think they might they could do something like that. But I don't think opening with that was like the best idea because nobody's really talking about demon x machina and like everybody was super confused when that game appeared <laughs> because everybody was just like what is this and then when the title appeared they were like i'm still confused because i don't know how to pronounce this oh yeah um I think yeah the, so I think the demo I actually hurt that game more than it helped it i downloaded that demo i still haven't played it yet um i should definitely get to doing that soon it's but... an extra step than i did because i didn't even download yeah, I, it so <laughs> i downloaded and played it but it, it had some issues that's the problem it was like one of their betas or like you were supposed to get yeah. feedback and there were just there were some issues i will say well, uh with they, with they the... were actively asking for feedback too <laughs> oh, so that's oh, at least they, good they, i guess they got <laughs> they got some feedback from me i'll say i <laughs> <laughs> got some feedback but uh uh, I will say if there is a Smash character to open, I actually think it won't necessarily be a square character right away because Joker was kind of out of left field. I think it could be Dante from Devil May Cry. Oh, interesting. Wow. That'd be a good choice. I'd like that. Especially considering now we know that Devil May Cry is coming to the Switch. Yes. Yeah, yeah. for yeah. like $70 oh probably. Oh my God. Yeah. Capcom, yeah. Capcom's trying to like, man, they're trying to give me like an early stroke over here with some of these prices. <laughs> I just uh, got to say, I'm still disappointed that Resident Evil 4 didn't have the motion control stuff from the Wii version. It's like, it's an extra $10, and that stuff didn't get carried over. I'm going to be honest. I saw Scott's video on Re Resident Evil 4 on the Wii, and I was like, how did, how did Capcom mess this up? Like, I don't understand. Right. It, was, it was the best for it, because, like, I don't know why. I was just like, that's going to be the one I'm going to play, because I finally decided to start playing that recently. And uh, the Wii version is amazing. Like, yeah. I like... I like the lower resolution just because like the game was made for that resolution because in HD like it looks cleaner but you can see a lot of the you can see a lot of the cracks a lot more you can see like some of the, the dirty texture work or like little things they did to like that would be masked under a lower resolution that's very apparent in 1080p um and no gyro you know like that game that game still controls well but it's just kind of like it's it's a little 
clunky to get used to and with the wii remote it's just like it's it controls like butter it's so good <laughs> yeah it, it really is i would i would like to see something crazy like a dante or some off the wall character i mean if they had banjo kazooie there to cement that microsoft like yeah. partnership that's what i'm holding off to like yeah, like i well, think that microsoft is gonna on their conference be like hey banjo 3 is gonna happen and it's also gonna be on the switch and also Here's Banjo Kazooie in Switch. In See, I, don't think, I don't think the Banjo Smash reveal would be during Microsoft, but I agree with you that there is potential there this year for either a Banjo 3E or a real kind of Banjo game. But the other thing that people aren't really talking about in terms of you know Microsoft collaborations with Nintendo is we already have Rare Replay. And there was already information about Blast Core and Jet Force Gemini spirits that were sort of hidden in the data for Smash Ultimate already. So I think if anything, what they could do is end the E3 Direct with the reveal of Banjo-Kazooie in Smash. And then you know how they always announce kind of smaller things during Treehouse Live like they did with Samus Returns? Is during Treehouse Live, we'll jump right to it after the Banjo thing. And then they could say, oh, by the way, Rare Replay coming to the Nintendo Switch. And Cuphead's obviously done so well for them. Minecraft has done so well for them on Switch, too. So I don't see any reason why they wouldn't port that over. Yeah, so, that would be like a dream come true on Switch. But uh, do you think they would like include like uh, the Donkey Kong games with that? I don't know. Well, if see, they that would, would be the dream could. come true, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, I, those are Nintendo owned right? things. And they're like, no, can we, oh, can we're can not. We have, can we have Con can we have Conquer? Can we have Conquer? Uh, on, uh, in Smash or? I mean, like, uh, if, if they do, like, a rare... <laughs> Could you I mean, imagine? sure. <laughs> if, if they have, like, a, like the rare replay. Yeah. That'd be cool. I mean, like, they... That's but then again, oh, shoot. If they would include the Donkey Kong games, I don't know if Nintendo would want to include, like, Donkey Kong in a collection of games that's rated M. Oh, because rare replay oh, is rated point. M because yeah. Conquer and Perfect <laughs> yeah. Dark are in there. So, ah, I, don't, I don't... Okay. I'm going to lay it down here right now. Donkey Kong, not going to be in Rare Replay for Switch. <laughs> if Rare Replay is even coming to but Switch. What, so. if, what if they fit uh, Goldeneye in there? No. <laughs> there's some weird licensing <laughs> issues with that, though. Because yeah, there's, there's too you many fingers the in there. Now, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I, yeah they would I have to like... go to Activision and Rare and Nintendo. Or maybe Activision doesn't even own didn't, didn't uh, like, the James Bond like Lions, anymore, Lionsgate or something own it for a while, too? It's like... I don't know, man. It's been all over the place. the place. There's too much stuff going on there. I think like, I think it might be likely for an N64 Classic Edition. Ooh. Who knows? They might be like, we have to get GoldenEye. Like, that yeah. is a must. Rare Replay, I think enough people would be like, I'm going to get that regardless of if GoldenEye's on there. So right. let me let me go over to Nate here, because Nate, you're the one who who broke the, the story about uh, Cup, oh, Ori, but Cuphead kind of fell off came with that uh about microsoft and nintendo doing some uh some collaboration what do you do you think anything like that's happened at e3 we're over here talking about banjo kazooie on the switch right now what do you what do you what do you got over there <laughs> I, mean, I think we see more of the nintendo microsoft relationship blossom at e3 i don't necessarily think it's going to happen at nintendo's direct mm. i think it would be more mm. at microsoft's conference where you would see them expand on the services to switch or some of their releases like ori coming to switch I don't see like because the directs because they're pre-recorded, you lose some of that impact. Yeah. Whereas yeah. if Microsoft yeah. comes out with Doug Bowser and says we're bringing Ori and Banjo to Switch, it has a major impact to everybody. Ooh, you know, the can, crowd, the yeah. people watching. Yeah. That's I true. Can, yeah. I can they see want that crowd Phil reaction. Spencer saying that. I can see Phil Spencer saying that. Like he's talking about his relations with third parties, and he says, "And we're also like blossoming our relationship with Nintendo." That would be like a huge That'd thing. That'd be insane oh, if Doug yeah. Bowser yeah. walked onto that stage, or if they got me, <laughs> if they got Miyamoto on that stage. Oh my God! Could you imagine? That's, yeah, that would be mind blowing <laughs> to see that well, there. One, one thing I'm thinking about right now too. Obviously, the game's already on Switch, and I'm a huge fan of it. And that's Cuphead. Uh, the website for Cuphead updated with that DLC. How there's going to be the uh, like the last meal or the last plate or something, whatever it's called, where there's the new chef character and you could play as Miss Chalice. That got announced at last E3, and we haven't seen anything of that since. I'm betting we'll probably see gameplay for that during Microsoft's conference, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see a little headline of, by the way, the DLC is coming to the Switch version as well during Nintendo's. Ooh, that reminds mm. me, what about the Battletoads game they announced oh last gosh, E3? Because that oh, wow. could also yeah. come oh, yeah. to Switch. Man. <laughs> totally that, right. that would be that would be that would be so well suited for Switch. 
Uh, I don't know, like, if it automatically would. I feel like Microsoft would probably want stuff on their platforms first, and then it comes to Switch, but who knows? We're going to see something funny with that, because, uh, Nate, you were saying that it sounded like both Ori and its sequel are coming to the Switch, possibly day and date, maybe? Not sure about the sequel. Okay, okay. I'm not sure how that one's going to work out. But okay. definitely Ori and the Blind Forest is yeah, coming to Switch. Okay, okay. That's fine. Mm. That's fine. Well, I mean, we were already talking about Microsoft in Smash. Uh, we only really talked about Banjo-Kazooie, but there's two other there's two other big ones that are <laughs> rumored they, and people are <laughs> speculating. Are they, are they, are uh, they're they talking now? Master Chief and <gasps> Minecraft Steve. Okay, wait. And... Minecraft Steve, eh, but Master yeah. Chief, yo, yeah. man. Minecraft Steve's been that rumor since yeah. Nintendo announced yeah. the I, yeah. As much as I like Banjo, like, I'm much more of a Banjo-Kazooie guy than a Halo guy. But I think Master Chief would literally make so many headlines and be the historic moment to see oh, the yeah. Xbox mascot in Smash Bros. That would be huge because Banjo Kazooie is more like our thing, where it's just like Nintendo fans dream of this. And then Minecraft Steve is kind of like, eh, okay, you know, it makes sense, but you know, like it's not like this amazing thing. But I think Master Chief would literally like blow everybody's yeah, mind. Yeah, and Joker. Yeah. Joker inspiration. has a gun, right? So like they yeah, can go. put a gun in there. So yeah. <laughs> and really, Master and Chief. Bayonetta has the, guns too, right? The trailer for Master Chief, I could see it now, where you know he looks up in the sky, you hear bum ba, bum bum oh, bum, man. and instead of looking yeah. at the halo, you see the reflection of the fiery Smash Ball. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> and they made. could do that alongside uh, showing off gameplay of like Halo Infinite because they announced that there last year. There so go. there's so many different things they could do with that. I think. Yeah. Minecraft Steve is probably what Nintendo would want the most because that is that is the biggest game of all time. And that is like the, I think as much as like I don't really care, like I think Minecraft Steve has kind of like solidified his place in gaming history. Yes. Um yeah. and then Banjo Kazooie is more of like our thing. It's not ba- Banjo Kazooie hasn't really been relevant for about ten years. And even then, <laughs> like ten years ago who like the definition of relevant is nuts and bolts so it's just like (laughs) okay um but then master chief has always kind of been a constant on Mm -hmm. xbox and just in the public's eye i think that is probably my most wanted microsoft character as weird as that sounds just because that would be huge yeah that would be massive i think that would be huge for everything that would that would that would show that that uh, like that partnership really solidifying there between them or that relationship anyway Yeah, yeah that would be ginormous what were you saying kevin Oh, I was going to say, I think um, something worth considering, too, is that, yes, Master Chief is a great choice as far as, like, that's the Microsoft, you know, representative. Uh, I think if we're talking from that standpoint, that is the most likely, if that's, you know, their logic. But another possibility, too, a little more out there, um, there could be the choice of something that's associated as being a Microsoft property, but is also maybe a little more... Uh, fitting to the tone of Nintendo, because Master Chief would definitely stick a little bit out. You know, wouldn't yeah. be. I mean, there's yeah. certainly some weird crossovers already, uh, but that would definitely be pushing the boundary even further. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, there's also possibilities. I mean, a lot of people were, of course, immediately yelling "Cuphead" once mm. uh, oh. it was ported. Dude, over. I would, I would weep and have a heart attack live <laughs> on stream. I just, I love everything about the aesthetic of yeah. that game. And so, if we had a, like an animated 2D hand-drawn stage in Smash Brothers, yeah. <laughs> I'd well, break like, down. And like I think that'd be a good choice. Another possibility too is that you know we've everyone talks about the fact that like oh yeah Ori's probably going to come to the Switch at some point that hasn't been officially announced yet as far as I'm aware. Correct. It's so it's been uh, spotted no, yeah. I think with uh, ratings board I believe. Yeah. So it's yeah. it's not an official announcement though. Yes. So there is the possibility that some kind of uh, dual announcement of. Uh, Ori coming to Switch, and then Ori being a Smash character. I mean, he's got a style and move set that would fit really well. And in fact, he already exists in a Smash clone that's uh, on Xbox. Uh, hmm. So it's a little bit yeah. of an outside choice, but I could yeah. see something like that working as sort of the crossover of Microsoft property and still very Nintendo Switch standard, you know, it just fits in. Yeah. Yeah. And you can't really like use the argument of like, oh man, this character is too new or this character isn't iconic enough anymore because it's just like Joker just got in. And Joker is like from a 2017 game that's only available on PlayStation. So it's just like, okay, anything can happen. Hey, we're getting we're getting we're getting Persona Dynasty Warriors. It makes sense. Okay. Yeah. I still I still feel like I feel like we're still gonna get vanilla persona five on Switch at some point. Like 
that's just something that I can't imagine Nintendo because we know Sakurai didn't choose these characters. Sakurai made multiple tweets saying Nintendo right. gave me the characters and I went to these companies. Don't come at me if your favorite yeah. character is not in the game. <laughs> so Nintendo must have wanted Joker in there for a reason. And mm. I really, I don't think it was for, you know, Dynasty Warrior, Persona 5 Scramble or whatever. I feel like they just don't want to announce that Vanilla Persona 5 is going to come to Switch while all the hype is around Royal. But that's... Ah, that's something that's got to happen eventually. Yeah, but it could also just be so that Nintendo just kind of like maintains their relationship with Atlas because I don't know, like it could just be like a nice little like thing Nintendo does where it's just like, hey, Atlas, we're going to put your main character right now in Smash yeah. Brothers. And it could just be like to just maintain that relationship. What's and I mean, they are nice. developing Shin Megami Tensei 5. Oh, yeah, so, definitely. Yeah, I mean, they that do could be coming. just like Eventually. a nice thing that they're doing just to be like, hey, let's keep our relationship with atlas going and i don't For know sure something well, like that i mean atlas has a pretty strong relationship with nintendo i mean sure the big stuff oh, like yeah. persona is, is playstation but i mean persona q2 is coming out on the 3ds this mm -hmm. summer because it's still happening for that system <laughs> um <laughs> but like rating that we're getting the the musao game of course like we were saying uh the uh smt5 uh and then yeah it's it, it's a good relationship still and yeah it the vanilla thing seems weird to me because, yeah, it, the wind's just knocked out of it by Royal existing. You know, like unless that's the, actually the version that comes way later down, it's just it's a weird fit. So, mm -hmm. uh, do you think there's? Uh, ahead, uh, I ahead. just I just have one more no, question. Go for it. Go for it. Uh, do you think? Uh, do you think there is actively a Sony exclusivity thing with the mainline oh, Persona? Man. <laughs> probably because probably like there's because. Persona Q comes to Nintendo platforms. The Persona fighting games came to 360 and Xbox. Uh, mm -hmm. they, there might have been one on Xbox One. I'm not sure. But um, th and then like Persona uh, 5 Scramble is coming to Switch. But none of the main like Persona games leave PlayStation. So it's I just like I, I don't know. 100%. I don't think it has to necessarily be a contract as just an understanding between the two companies. Yeah, like a general yeah. disagreement. Sony can say, <laughs> I'll help fund some of the development and publishing. Okay. Yeah, and that Atlas will sense. say, that sounds good. And then Atlas goes to Nintendo and say, you know, we give you the Tensai series and you'll help us with publishing in the West. I think it's more of just a gentleman's yeah. agreement between the yeah. companies. Yeah, because there was like, um, I think I saw somebody bring up the idea that... Um, uh, what like I don't know like Atlas is just like well we've just put Persona on PlayStation because that's where the audience is and I'm like I don't know about that because you put like <laughs> the Persona fighting games on Xbox and I'm just like why would those do well on Xbox but the regular Persona games they're, wouldn't do I well I think they're it's gonna just... I think they're gonna reevaluate that going into Persona mm -hmm. Six mostly mm -hmm. because they lost the Vita yeah so their portable version of Persona Five isn't gonna and work, Persona like, Persona yeah, Four Gold on anything was the... but Switch. That was the best-selling game, I believe, on the Vita. Yeah, I, I wouldn't yeah, doubt easily. it. Yeah, that easily. was one of the only major games on Vita. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> I think it was that and Uncharted were like the two best-selling games yeah. on that system. Well, yeah. and Uncharted was like the heavily branded. Like this came out at launch, so if you're going to buy a Vita right away, I guess grab this. Yeah, uh, yeah like that was much, you know, that yeah. was sort of the, the the default, you know. Uh, so, yeah. Let's if anything, see. can Atlas for the Switch develop a new Trauma Center game? Ooh. Oh, please. Oh, Hell yes! <laughs> hey, the Trauma Center Doctor in Smash Brothers. That's what I want. Is that is that is that That'd part of your like is that, that throw just throw scalpels at people? It'd be great. <laughs> that was a that was actually a good prediction there, Jordan. They hey, just, I mean it's been a while. Move. They had one on the Wii. I thought it worked well yeah. on the Wii. Could translate yeah. to the Switch. I think it's been like ten years. It's been crazy. I think this it's the most team. awaited yeah, sequel like Trauma Team. Yeah. Trauma Team killed that franchise because nobody bought it. <laughs> hey man, it sold like you did buy copies it. worldwide. Nate's right on time. <laughs> and I bought all. Of I bought it. I love that game. Trauma Team was amazing. It's everyone else who didn't buy it. It's all yeah, your yeah. fault. Oh, <laughs> uh, we'll put it on the Switch and see what happens. It's there you go. Off, so. uh, Do it, you cowards. We need uh, we need release dates though. That's one of the things I I think everyone's going to E3 looking for, right? Because there are a bunch of first party games coming out, but no release dates despite them having 2019 as their year that they're coming out. So we kind of have to figure out when these games are coming out. Like, there's all right. So let me go down here and we'll see if you guys can pick the month for them. All right, <laughs> uh, Zelda Link's Awakening, August or December. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going Those with I'm going ones, with the, I'm going with yeah. the first week in December, like you're saying. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm December. going with November. Ooh, you think it's going to be there with Pokemon? 
Well, let's, I think that's Animal a Crossing and we'll November. see. Okay, okay, we'll keep going on the list. All right, uh, these are ones we don't have release dates for yet, uh, by the way, because we have them already for Poke. We already have them for Pokemon, Mario Maker, Fire Emblem, Marvel Ultimate Alliance, Astral Chain. Uh, those are all ones we already have release dates for. Mm. But uh, uh, well, Pokemon we don't have release date for, but we believe that's November. We'll find out next week, I guess, most likely. Pretty uh, traditional. Yeah, uh, but Animal Crossing. When is that one? That one's divisive. I hear all months all over the place for Animal Crossing. I'm sticking with September for that, mid-September. Okay. I feel like it's going to be December. I'm I, going with December. Ooh, I have City some weird Hulk feeling. in November, so I'm going to say November. I have a weird feeling that game might get delayed still. Like, they've they've reiterated time don't and time you again dare. that it's 29. Oh, I, believe me, Animal Crossing is <laughs> my second favorite franchise of all time. Roger, no don't put I'm that into the universe. Do I know, but I just, I just, I want to be reasonable. I know that's Nate's job, but I just, I want to say for a second. <laughs> I feel I, like... I, I've thought about that, too. I was like, we haven't seen it. They haven't talked about right. it much. Even the mention at, like, their press briefing for like the investors it was kind of like yeah it's 2019 but they didn't really seem confident in it so if it slips right. to 2020 my concern is when do you announce that you can't do it at e3 because then people are going to be pissed but you can't right. you also well, can't think, have it there then right well you could still have it because it'll still yeah, sure. be like the fiscal 2019 oh uh, well, i think it could still be like if it's a. Uh, if they announce that at E3, I mean, like, it could be, like, they just do a blowout where they show, like, hey, this is how much stuff is going, like, it's worth the wait. That might be their reasoning if mm, it's delayed, yeah. and they reveal that it's coming out in 2020. Or, I, I mean, they could, they, could, they could just could say 2019, March. not give a release date during E3, and then in September, when we get another giant direct, they go, oh, by the way, this got pushed. Ah, yeah. pulling a, yeah, pulling a like Star it. Fox Zero, I see. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we always we don't we don't we talk about that game. That's, that's always a that's always a good thing. They're, they're learning from the best. <laughs> get that like uh, cutish, like nonchalant video game February March every year from them. So they could throw it that February March area, and that's still nah. fiscal 2019. That sounds like yeah. a good time for like Pikmin three remaster mm. deluxe, yeah. whatever they want to call it. All right, what about uh, what about Luigi's Mansion three? October. That, is October. that is October. October. It might be late September just to get it more time, but who knows? Everyone's yeah. going October. Yeah, October. I'm I'm going I'm actually going September on this one. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go that. against the grain on this one. That's sacrilege. Like early October. A Halloween thing in September. It's, it's been it's already been rated. Uh I, I think I think that's actually gonna be one of the first games they release out of this bunch. Yeah. I mean, they just I mean, out. That's definitely yeah. one of the ways to go. So yeah. was, I think it definitely has to be out before uh, Halloween, though. I, I think I think you're right on that, Scott. It right. has to be out. Yeah, by then. yeah, yeah, definitely before Halloween. It could pull it, the original. The original released with the GameCube in like mid November. Mm -hmm. It's just like wow. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What about like well, you tried? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what What about uh, Town from Game Freak? I think that's delayed till 2020. Agreed. Okay. Yeah. 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 Like okay. I just as much as like they the last the rest of their year is so packed. Yeah. And I'm yeah. just like, uh, like that's just gonna. And you already have a Game Freak RPG with Pokemon, and I'm just like, I don't know. I can see that like March 2020. To be, be honest, it yeah. would be weird for them to release Pokemon and Town within like a month of each other. So I don't I think, think no. competing with themselves would be pretty I think, bad. I think you yeah. could throw Town in like September because it's probably just going to be an eShop release. It's Ooh. not going to be that big of a game. It's okay. pretty self-contained oh, to just really? Town. Is it? You think that's going to be like a thirty-dollar game then, or something? Yeah, I think it's a budget release because they talked about it recently where they were pretty confident they were hitting 2019 with both town wow. and pokemon interesting mm. okay wow that that's weird that they like announce an eShop game a year before they uh <laughs> they release it though you know i think well, town like, town could be a I, I think that would actually fit all right in the january where like travis fit this year yeah oh yeah yeah mm -hmm. Well, to be fair, didn't they announce like Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles: My Life as a King or something oh like two years gosh. before that game came out on Wii? So who knows? <laughs> Kevin, what were you what were you trying to uh, say, Kevin? Build up oh, that no, one. Oh, no, I was just agreeing with oh. with the uh, the general time frame. And uh, the thing is, too, like with Town, how much do we actually know? Like hard. Nothing. We like know, did, we like, know the, that the, uh, the no, UI. In a town. We know, <laughs> we know that the UI <laughs> oh. takes up about twenty so, or seventy percent of the screen. Do you see those screenshots yeah. of the UI? <laughs> <laughs> I yes, it's ridiculous. I, yeah, I I just don't know what to make of it as far as like what Nintendo thinks of it, what their goal with it is. Because yeah, on the one hand, it could very easily be read as like a forgettable eShop title, but again, they announced it so far in advance, and there's so little we know. I mean, out of nowhere, they could just make it a focus announcement and be like, oh, by the way, here's all the stuff about town. And it's actually this ambitious project we were just not talking that much about yet. You know, like there's so it, it's just it's such an unknown. Mm. It's. Yeah, Do you think it's going to actually have a different title? <laughs> uh, I 
no. <laughs> yeah, it's like, they're gonna have multiple it's town. town. It's, yeah. it's town. It's Game Freak. I, I, it's gonna be like Aliens, where the second one's called Towns. <laughs> I, I, I think. I think no this for is. Towns. I, uh, it's yeah. City. Thank you very much. It's gonna be called uh, Town city. Resurrection. <laughs> yeah. I town versus Predator. Yeah. Yeah. Town versus City. Oh man. I oh think, my god. I think this you is write... basically. I feel like this is just Game Freak, just trying to learn how to do 3D before the next Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's totally mm. fair i mean like it yeah. looks i think it looks like it, it might be a little more colorful than mm. sword and shield like it might have more it might be more saturated i think I, I i forget i need to compare the two screenshots again i mean the two games again but i don't know uh, and then uh the other one i i had written down was uh damon x mocking it you guys think that's even coming out this year Sep- i think it's september you think they're just probably. pushing that thing out the door all right yeah yeah, yeah. september october okay like before the main rush Okay. Okay. I, I hope. Like I guess I hope they changed a lot because it it needs it needs some help. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I I miss Armored Core. Yeah. So I, could, I, I could just use something similar. Just it, bring it back a little bit. It has the people behind it. Uh, yeah. I will at least say that. So if it's yeah, at it least never average. Looked, it never looked bad. It was just this. It was incredibly forgettable. I think for the majority of people. Yeah. Oh, it's and super. That's neat. kind of the main problem. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like it shouldn't be. It's giant mechs like <laughs> fighting each yeah. other. That's awesome, but it's just like the way they present it every single time. It's just like it's super forgettable. I think, and that's a problem. Like well, I just think it could be way bigger than it uh, than it is. Yeah, I think especially with like that series and that style, so much of the fun comes from like, hey, you like building stuff and crunching numbers, right? And it's hard to like <laughs> do that in a yeah. trailer. You know, they're not going to show you like, well, here's the screen showing your weight versus energy consumption and how it all works out. And it's like that's not it's not appealing in a trailer, you know. So mm-hmm. it's, yeah, it's a weird sell. It's it's just a it's like a spiritual sequel to a cult series that yeah yeah it's just kind of do. That's a budget like title release. Yeah. Like they're going to drop that at like forty. You think so? I, yeah. I, th- I mean, I, think, I, don't I, think see, might... I don't see enough. I don't see enough hype for it. You uh, know, I think they might try to get a full sixty. They, they. I mean, they. Yeah. Yoshi was Nintendo. Yeah. Nintendo. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, you're right. If Yoshi was sixty, yeah, I mean, Nintendo was Nintendo. Yoshi was sixty. Anything can be sixty. <laughs> uh, that game was that okay. Game has, I think it, it has was two fine. easy modes. It has an easy. Yeah. Okay, let me let me re- easier. Let me rephrase that. New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe was sixty dollars. So this can be yeah. okay. And didn't that still sell a bunch? It did. It sold well. Man, and then they're like, Mario Maker. I'm not it's saying Nintendo. that game was like worth sixty dollars, but at least like it wasn't like Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, where that was actively always less than sixty dollars yeah. on Wii U. Yeah, and then and then they just farted it out for sixty on Switch. Yeah. I can't but at least forty dollars. Yeah. Funky, but Funky Kong is worth the extra. Money. <laughs> All right, well, I'm willing you put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> What's I, insane is I just looked up top selling title uh, sales units on the Nintendo website for the Switch, and actually, New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe is already the seventh best yep. selling game on the system yep. with three point three million units <laughs> sold. Yeah. It's for I know Yoshi dollars. Yoshi 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 is kicking like, back at his desk with a cigar in his mouth, laughing. <laughs> <laughs> the huge thing there, I mean, that's look like if you've been a long-term gaming fan and you're approaching the Switch, I think we have our mentalities of like, oh yeah, like that's a port. Who cares? But the whole success story of the Switch is that it's like brought a lot of people back into Nintendo that haven't yeah, even played a console yeah. in years. So when they see a mm-hmm. side-scrolling Mario game and it's like the first one on the Switch they've seen since like whatever playing Super Mario Brothers three as a kid, that's an easy sell, like a yeah. super easy sell. You know, you just and, I mean, in, yeah. that's a two D Mario game you can buy. So it's just yeah. like, of course, it sells well. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah. that's a big reason I feel like why Mario Kart's doing so well on it too. It's so many people skipped the Wii U generation. Their last Mario Kart game was the one that was on Wii. They see this new system that's a handheld that's also HD, and they go, "Oh my God, Mario Kart Eight! Like it's been a while since I played Mario Kart, and now that's sold seventeen million units. It's already like doubled how many yeah. they sold on Wii. Well, U, even so. people who played Mario Kart Eight on Wii U bought it again. So exactly. It's just like, exactly. It's just, yeah. People double tipped. Yeah. So it's just like, yeah, it's just like ports can be annoying, but it's just like I think Nintendo is kind of stupid for not doing them yeah, in this yeah. case. So it's just like, oh okay. yeah, me, well, especially uh, with how poorly the Wii U did. Hey, oh yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Um, so like in terms of Wii U ports, actually bringing this up, uh, do you think any Wii U ports will be announced at E3? Yeah, I don't think they yeah, usually yeah. do Wii U ports yeah. at E3 though. <laughs> Look, I gotcha. think you have. I, it's not going to be like in their direct. <laughs> it's going to annoy yeah. some people. This, they, Look, they're going to have one there that's probably going to annoy some people most likely. <laughs> I am just prepping the ritual circle that that Tokyo Mirage sessions happens. It's oh not yes. really happened, but yes. I'm, just, I'm that already is not, just, I'm, yeah. I'm that is not my kind of game, I'm, but I'm, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Look, look. Here's the thing. It is 
I don't like anything about it on like the flavor side, but the mechanics <laughs> and gameplay is so good. It is such a great like team based RPG. I will you go this far. Idle stuff. <laughs> I will go this far and say Tokyo Mirage Sessions is a better game than Persona Five. Whoa! That is. That is I've never played either, but take. I'm offended. Wow. Pure gameplay. I agree. Okay. Uh, I will. We we believe Pikmin Three is going to be there. <laughs> Well, that's, yeah, I mean, Pikmin 3 that, that stings, dude. That's been rumored for that's a while. Rough. Well, here's here's what I hope. Here's what I hope. When they do Pikmin 3 and they show it, they do that thing where they say, oh, guys, and don't worry, Pikmin 4 is also coming. Something like that. Yeah, that's Probably what we said was going to happen at the Video Game Awards yeah, with know, Metroid Prime know, Trilogy and Metroid Prime 4. And you know what Nintendo said? So I said? actually, I still think that's going to happen. I think that's going to happen at E3. I think we're going to get something similar to what happened when the Pokemon Company president came on and said a couple years ago, like, oh, we're making the new mainline Pokemon game, but also we're working on this other thing. I could the see Pikmin them president? Saying, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm talking about <laughs> Metroid Prime. That would be... <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but, but I feel like we're going to get president. an inside look at Retro Studios. We see somebody there, one of the directors or something mentioning we're hard at work at Metroid Prime 4 obviously development just restarted we don't have anything to show but we're really happy to announce that we're bringing over this holiday season Metroid Prime Trilogy on the Switch and then that makes people really happy that support people actually want and then we don't have to worry about seeing anything in regards to Metroid Prime 4 until either next E3 or like the Tokyo Game Show time next year at the earliest. Uh, Nintendo still has about another year left of trolling me before they're going to do that. So, <laughs> yeah, that's it. I would like to see Retro Studios shown in some way, kind of like how they showed the Pokemon uh, uh, company, essentially, inside. Exactly. Just sitting at his desk. Well, like, I mean, what's happening? they've had to be doing something these past four years. We keep so saying that. Like, <laughs> yeah, every year. We're going to say Retro. Out. Retro's nowhere to be shown. Like, oh, they'll be there next year. Nope. <laughs> they yeah. just sat there at a desk going, what if we did Metroid Prime 4? <laughs> yeah. We have if? a, we yeah. actually, we talked about a fun theory about that, didn't we, Nate, about how they ended up, like, getting the the project despite oh, yeah. not having anything? Yeah. We, how they probably, uh, they were making Metroid Prime Trilogy, and then they were like, look, we did this good, and Nintendo's like, you're right, here's we, Metroid Prime 4. We think, we think they came up with, like, a, an engine, basically, that moved trilogy over and they mm. showed that engine as a concept to Nintendo for Prime 4 when Bandai and their internal team was messing things up and they decided right then and there to restart development because the engine was so good. That was mm -hmm. just a little theory we it's threw. It's a good out theory. There. Yeah. So, that's cuz we were trying to figure out why they would even restart Prime 4 if if it, there wasn't something amazing on the table from Retro, but I would like to think they're going to be there, but ugh, yeah. Man. I think I my do love action is that they do a new IP just because mm -hmm. that whole like mm -hmm. Reggie uh, that Reggie photo oh, that, that they robot gave him. Arm. Yeah, yeah that, nobody knows what that is. So I'm just like, you know what? That could be a new IP. I don't know. That's a cool. good call. Yeah, Max coming over from PlayStation. Great. Don't <laughs> don't curse. Don't curse the Switch with the Mac. Mac. We're getting Mac 3 exclusively. Oh, my God. gosh. Uh, I don't know. Do any of you guys follow the Retro Studios Twitter account? Because it's genuinely funny, like, knowing that we haven't seen anything from them. And they just tweet once every four months, and yep. it's a gif of them cutting up ribs, saying, they, oh, happy July 4th, or happy really, Halloween. They keep, they keep pretending, like, if you go back, though, like a year ago, they were pretending like they actually had something to show. Yeah. Like they kept teasing something and I'm thinking, are they, are they actually going to show now? We say that every E3, we say that every direct and, uh, nothing happens. So I'm, I'm hoping at, this is it, you know, at this point, I think retro just caters Nintendo's like cafeteria. <laughs> they make brisket and everything. That's uh, the only thing they tweet about. It's the only the thing only, they actually show they might produce. Is the food. Only, yeah. The only thing that could like that would explain it is that they had a project and, they, and it got canceled, but then why would they get prime for so I, I don't know. Let me, let me go through. I'm gonna rifle off a bunch of uh, third-party games. You guys can uh, comment on any you'd like, and then we'll get into predictions real quick. Uh, these cool. are all games that I believe are coming out in 2019. I don't know about Doom Eternal. A lot of people think it might. If it's not holiday, it's probably spring 2020. Uh, and then we don't know about Shin Megami uh, Tensei, but I'll, I'll put that in there anyway. And then we have Dragon Quest XI, Yu-Gi-Oh!, Bloodstained, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles, Crash Team Racing, Dragon Quest Builders 2, Doom Eternal, Grid Auto Sport, Digimon Survive, Contra Anniversary Collection, Red Faction Remastered, God Eater 3, and then Bulletstorm. Did you did you remember Disney Sum Sum Festival? Nope, nope. You know what? Hold on. Oh, okay. Disney. Oh, geez. That's, that's Zoom, a good one. Zoom. God. I expect a very good video on Disney. <laughs> Festival, Scott. Oh, <laughs> oh my god, man. I can't wait. <laughs> and Zoom, also, Zoom festival. There we go. Spyro reignited. Uh, it, is that is that a prediction or what is? What are you doing, it's, Jordan? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying in Jordan. general. Ah, uh... oh, Jordan. 
nothing. <laughs> we you, know nothing. Would you like to so, comment oh, on any of these games that I just said that, that people are looking forward to or anything? Crystal Chronicles um, is going to be amazing on the Switch. Oh, I, I want Crystal that. Crystal Chronicles, yeah. Okay, okay. I, I was, uh, I've got really excited over the Contra Anniversary Collection because they're finally bringing back Contra NES because I don't think that's ever been re-released. Did you see the list? That, did no. you see the list that I yeah, put out? They're yeah. bringing back, and they're bringing back Probotector, yep. the European <laughs> version of Contra. <laughs> Hell yeah, I'm so excited for that. That's going to be cool. That's probably out. Yeah. That's probably out in like a month or so. Mm, so I think it's I'm pretty awesome. excited about That'd that. Be cool. That'd be cool. CTR cool. is also out in a month. Uh, I think it's going to play really well on the Switch. What's, the, what's that? Oh, it. CTR? Yeah, I played it on a PS4 at PAX. Mm, okay. And it uh, controls really well. Very similar to the original. Slight, slight differences. Uh, doesn't feel like Mario Kart drifting is completely different. So don't think like if you're good at Mario Kart, <laughs> you're going to be good at CTR right away. <laughs> I'm, ex- I'm actually uh, excited for the, the younger audience to see what a uh, adventure racing style game is. Yeah, and they're doing a lot. They have all the uh, characters and tracks from... Uh, um, what was the other CTR game? Uh, the the one on the PS2, Nitro Kart. Yeah, yes. there they have all the stuff from that coming in there. Ooh. So there's almost there's over like forty tracks. There's a heck of a ton of characters that haven't even been shown off yet, and the customization stuff is great. Story mode just got a fully announced the other day. This game is going to be huge for forty dollars. Yeah. This game is going to be massive. Yeah, I was worried about that because it was like the same price as the Insane Trilogy, and I'm like, but it's one kart racing game, but it's mm. from like the '90s, and I'm just like, no, okay, they're actually they're actually making this worthwhile. So that's pretty cool. Mm. No, they they definitely stepped it up, and yeah. uh, they definitely made it worth the forty dollars. Nice, mm-hmm. very cool. Uh, I'm actually excited for Dragon Quest Eleven on the Switch. Maybe they'll have a release. Yeah, that for looks yeah. really good. Like, yeah, that yeah. looks very on par with PS4. Did anyone, did anyone play it on the PS4? Uh, so I have. I stopped as soon as it was announced. Uh, <laughs> confirmed for Switch. Super, just basically, just like the, here's all the extra stuff that yes. uh, we didn't get in the original release, yeah. which is infuriating. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so uh, it's great. I didn't beat it, like I said, because I just gave up as soon as it was well, announced. Well, here's but, uh, here's the funny thing about that. I put, uh, I think, just over 70 hours into that one, and I love Dragon Quest Eleven. but when mm. you beat it and you get, like, the credits, there's, like, a whole other part of the game after that. So... After I oh, started yeah. working into that, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna wait for the Switch version because they showed everything. They showed like like all kinds of extra content, full voiceover, all kinds of stuff. They have like the little eight bit mode in there. Yes, I love oh, that so much man. for the world exploration. Yeah, that's great. So, yeah, that was that was very exciting just because that was in the 3DS version mm-hmm. that was only released in Japan. Right. Yep. Yeah, so that's pretty cool that they're actually bringing that as a part of the uh, Switch release. Yes. Well, yeah, because it's basically like this is the complete fully updated version, which is mm-hmm. a really annoying thing a lot of JRPGs have been doing lately. I mean, we're seeing it again with Persona 5 uh, Royal, but like, yeah, this is the actual like definitive final one. So, or maybe, who knows? Maybe we'll get another re release yeah. after. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. who knows? Uh, do you guys want to wanna hit, hit us with some predictions? You guys got some crazy stuff, some, oh, some yeah. thoughts, some ideas? <laughs> what are hopes and dreams? What do you, what do you guys, what are we thinking here? I'll, I'll kick it off with, I would like to see a 2D Metroid game thrown in there. Mostly because mm-hmm. I've been playing, uh, 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 what you call it on the Samus Returns on the 3DS or yeah, 2DS XL, but yeah, 3DS. Yeah. Uh, and my, my eyes are still blurry from it. So I, I would <laughs> I heard like the 3D is really good in that game. It is. Yeah. But yeah. I would like to, I, I, I think it's just going from the switches screen back to the 2DS XL, which is like what, 240p or something. It, yeah. it just doesn't work. Uh, it uh, it doesn't. <laughs> so I, I would like to see... I don't know if they would just bring that over and just, like, you know, smooth it out and everything. If they're not going to do that and they have a new 2D Metroid game, I would like to see that. Or even, like, a Fusion remake or something. Yeah, like, oh. that was what I was going to ask. Do you think it would be a remake? Because the only games that need a remake... Well, I mean, not need, but haven't gotten one, are Super Metroid and Metroid Fusion, from what I remember. Oh. Um I think Fusion would definitely benefit the most. I think a lot of people would be like, we don't really need a Super Metroid remake, but I'm I'm open to that too. I went back to um, Fusion after playing this. I have the uh, the HDMI out for the GameCube and the uh, mm-hmm. the Game Boy Advance player, and that game still looks awesome. On, yeah, like, it's really screen. good. Oh, yeah. I recently played it too, and it's really good. Oh man, if they redid I that, feel be like, amazing. 
I think they could trust the team that remade Metroid 2 to make a brand new mainline Metroid game for Switch. I really do, because the original Metroid 2 is really not that good of a game. Yeah. And they turned it into something really fun and interesting with Samus Returns. And so I'd love to see what they would do with a totally new map and you know not having any real like, template to go on. They could just say, okay, run wild, here's the story, pick up where we left off with the, you know, the last Metroid in the timeline, which I guess is Fusion. Just com- continue the story, make a Fusion sequel, who knows? Ooh. Yeah, I'd that be would okay be nice. That. I'd be okay with that. Uh, what else do you guys got for predictions? Okay, so <laughs> totally isn't going to happen. Uh-huh. This is my hope every year, and I'm actually I'm, I'm doing some math right now. It, it adds up. This could happen. This could happen. I'm bringing the math in. All right. All right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Golden Sun four. It was it was eight years between two and three. So I mean, you know, we're at we're at nine right now since Golden Sun three, Dark Dawn. But uh, you know, it could happen. It could happen. Well, because even, uh, who is it, Camelot Studios or something like that? Mm-hmm. They, they did Mario Tennis Aces, and there's been no word since other than, I mean, DLC characters. So I would be fully know, on board with it. Golden Sun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> that would be great. It. I would be fully on board with that. Uh, mostly because, I mean, the Switch is owning Japan right now, so it would sell really well there, I would assume. Um, and uh, they have Camelot Software doing it. Yeah, yeah, I guess they could. I mean, what else would they... What else have they been working on after that? Did they well, Mario that's... Golf, Mario baby. Golf. Oh, my it gosh. Was... <laughs> it's back. <laughs> strikers. Strikers, oh, damn it. Ooh. Yes, I'll take Strikers. Well, Strikers, yeah, is, strikers is next is level, next right? Next level, and they're, doing, they're definitely doing Luigi's Mansion. Exactly. So I think it would be, exactly. like, next year at the very earliest if we get Strikers announced. <laughs> golf sadly. Was, wasn't, Mario golf, so wasn't Mario Golf really bad on the Wii U? It was not on the Wii U. Or the... That's how bad it was. Mario oh, Tennis on the Wii U was Mario atrocious. Tennis really bad. Wow, Mario it was a tech golf. demo for Aces, basically. <laughs> That's what I was thinking of. Mario Golf, it's been a while. Yeah, well, Mario had... Golf was on the 3DS, uh, but yeah. the last console one was yeah, Toadstool Tour on the GameCube. So that was it. Wow, I, long time. I did not been, realize it's been, been that long. Wow. Yeah. Been golf, has always, golf has consistently been really good. Like tennis is fine mm-hmm. in my opinion, but like tennis has definitely had some whew, tennis has had some low points in recent years yeah. in Mario Tennis. So I think I think golf has consistently been way better. So yeah. uh, I'd rather have a Golden Sun just because that's more variety. But uh, you know mm-hmm. Mario Golf, you know I think that might be more likely. But I- I'm with you, Kevin. I I, I really want to see Golden Sun just because it's been too long. Uh, yeah. Mario Golf falls under the same spell or curse as the tennis games. They have to go back to what made Mario Golf good, and that was having an RPG mode. Right. It has well, to I go think... with the Golf Story direction. I was just going to bring up Golf Story, right? Is that game was obviously so successful, and a lot of people brought that up in the early year of Switch. Everybody was saying, wow, this is one of the best indie games that's out there. I think they might have looked at that game and said, you know what? If it's working for this indie, why don't we just reinfuse this back into our mainline I would, franchise? I would just par- partner with that company and have them make yeah. Mario Golf, kind of like you it. have the, um, the Hyrule game come, well, eventually coming out, maybe this yeah. week, maybe E3 Shadow Drop. Oh, Cadence mm-hmm. of Hyrule, like, yeah. Yeah, partner with the indie company who made Golf Story to make Mario Golf. Ooh. I love it. Well, the Ooh. the newest Nintendo president, I think, like he was asked, like, what games have you been playing on your Switch, and he said Golf Story. Golf Story. So. If if anyone listening to this, you have not bought Golf Story, go buy it right now. Golf Story for Smash confirmed. It is a, it first. is an outstanding game. <laughs> everyone needs to go play that game. It is really really fun. Well, if you say so. While yeah. we're on the topic of Mario things, though, I want to bring up one other thing because we were mm-hmm. mentioning games that might come out in certain release months. And one month that we all kind of avoided was August. And two years ago on the Switch, there was a game that came out in August that a lot of people didn't necessarily think was going to be great. And it ended up being one of the best games on the system. And that is Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle. And I think what we're going to see is, obviously, we already had that Donkey Kong DLC for the game. I think at Ubisoft's conference this year, we're going to see a sequel announced for Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle. And I think the focus in this one is going to be on Wario. And that we're going to have Wario as a playable character with some type of, like, Wah, Rio, Rabbit or something, because the Rabbids always say Wah. I think they're just going to say goofy stuff. Obviously, they have the engine. I think they're going to want some type of Mario spinoff game for the holidays. Mm. Obviously, they have a mainline one this summer with Mario Maker 2. But the timing just kind of works for a Kingdom Battle. There'd be a smaller type of release, something that they could easily just announce here that might not have gotten leaked beforehand. But, mm-hmm. I mean, considering the last game got leaked to heck, I, who knows? I'll give you, I'll give you uh, one thing that could back that. Ubisoft told their investors that they have three AAA games coming out between now, unannounced ones, uh, coming out between now and uh, next March. And I can only figure out 
two of them possibly. There's a third one I can't figure out. I think one. Is Mario and... Rabbids really considered triple A. I mean, I think yeah. Ubisoft. I think oh Ubisoft, yeah, for oh. Ubisoft for sure. Yeah. I think Ubisoft defines it as how much money they put into it, but I think they also define it by sales, uh, like with how many people. And that are on game the did platform. really well, from what I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I, I feel like it might be right on the edge for them, Nate, just because of the Switch's audience size at the time. Uh, but they have, I think they're going to, I think they're going to have watchdogs, maybe a splinter cell as unannounced games, games we don't know about yet. Mm, and mm. I can't figure out what the third one is. So maybe Mario it, rabbits. There you go. Maybe it is Mario rabbits. Do you I, think there would be another Ubisoft Nintendo collaboration? Cause last year was Starlink. Uh, do you think they do a completely new one this year? I, I want to say yes. Cause I don't think the they Starlink could. one, the Starlink one obviously wasn't a full game. So they have like basically a year yeah. off essentially, but Nate, you don't think there's going to be one there, right? Nate? I'm not expecting one, at least not in a meaningful way. Like, I'm not going to dismiss the idea of a possibility of a Mario Rabbids 2 getting mm -hmm. announced with, like, a teaser trailer sure. at Ubisoft's E3 conference for, like, a 2020 release. Mm, okay, okay. That... But I think Ubisoft and Nintendo, they both just kind of like that we'll show it a few months before release. So they could wait till, like, an E3 2020 and then release the game in, you know, August. Have that three-month build instead of doing a year and a half. Okay. I mean, I think yeah. I think it's done well enough for them to do a sequel. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I think uh, Starlink. Uh, well, I mean, that that obviously didn't do well at all. But I think like maybe that could convince Nintendo to kind of give Ubisoft the Star Fox the Ooh. Star Fox IP Ooh. for maybe like next year. Like they might announce like the Ubisoft developed Star Fox game. I think that would be, be pretty cool. pretty cool. Even though Starlink and Star Fox are pretty different gameplay wise i just think you know like i think they've at least proven their worth with the Star Fox brand like they, yeah. they they've been shown to be able to uh use it very uh respectfully so and i would actually argue that the third party developed Star Fox games are better oh, than the majority yes. of the recent oh ones my Star Fox God. Is incredible oh, yeah. so <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> well, technically, Platinum Games developed Star Fox Zero, but Miyamoto kind of headed that. So yeah, yeah. let's again. Star we don't Fox talk about that Zero game, so. isn't that bad. It's not that it, bad, it, but it ain't good. Is that the one? <laughs> is that the one where I have to literally fly around with the tablet to play it? That's the one. It's okay, yeah, I just want to make good. sure. I just want to make sure it's that uh, it's currently in five belows all across America. I bought three copies of it just for funsies. <laughs> Wait, they're in five below, So <laughs> you're saying I could get like a yeah. hundred of them for? Fairly cheap. Brilliant. You get <laughs> two games. You get two games because it came with Star Fox Guard. Oh, oh that's right. Gosh, I forgot yeah. about that. We go to all the five and belows, buy every copy. Five Nights at Foxes, a... man. Oh, that game making right. a house. We that's build a house funny. out of all the copies. So wait, like I know we're focusing on Nintendo here, but going back to Ubisoft a little bit, are we just accepting that any of the more artistic games or Rayman are just dead at this point? I hope a new Rayman gets announced. I really hope, but oh, I, cool. I, yeah. it never happens. It never happens. I'm always like, Rayman is gonna, the new Rayman is gonna get announced yeah, at uh, Ubisoft, but it never happens. Yeah, because Origins Legends were so good, and I mean, they got yeah, they were plenty really of ports and re-releases, and yeah. nothing since. I, I mean, mm. how, I, I didn't actually look at the numbers for this. How did Rayman Legends do for the Switch re-release? Um, I think overall, because they've re-released it so many times, I think it did. It didn't do that well at first because they did delay, they delayed it initially, like right uh, when it was a Wii U exclusive, and I think that hurt it hard because it came out like the same month as like Grand Theft Auto Five hmm. or something. So it's just like, ha ha! <laughs> of course, it didn't do well. And then it got released on like next gen and then a uh, switch. So I think overall it's probably made its money back by this point, but I don't think Ubisoft is in any rush to do a new Rayman game. I would love uh, a new one of them on the go. Cause I remember back in the day I had uh, the first one on the 360, and I really wanted to play it on the go. So I literally traded that version in just to get the PS Vita version. <laughs> <laughs> Just to satisfy the need. And it was really great on the yeah, Vita. Yeah, I forgot Origins came out on the Vita. Yeah, it played great. Yeah, yeah they put yeah. a thing on like no, they're all, everything, didn't they? Like they were just throwing Rayman oh, on all kinds. It was and listen, everything. buttons, the buttons were even smaller on the Vita than they are on the Switch. So I think it'll be fine on the Switch. We get a brand new one. Take that on. Yeah, like I just want anything with Ubisoft's focus on like the art Mm. The visual art ones, you know, the UB art games. Like, there's just oh, yeah. there hasn't been one in a while. Well, you know? they brought back, they brought uh, Valiant Hearts. Is that it? Is that the name yeah. of it? And then, uh, yes. and Child of Light on the Switch. So I think they're still, they still re release them. I, I want to see more, like you said, yeah. but it hasn't been a while. It has been a while. So, yeah. yeah. Nate, do you have, a, uh, you have any predictions over there, Nate? My prediction is that we're going to see a lot of third-party announcements for switch at e3 oh well Not one of them one of them is uh, uh witcher 3 right <laughs> yeah I mean, we've got a lot of rumor out there now so yeah, like yeah, things yeah. like the witcher 3 
I think we're just going to see a bigger focus from third parties finally at E3 this year. Oh. Not in terms of necessarily, you know, like exclusives, but yeah. more, Are you, you know, day-to-day like... -day releases with other versions. Oh, okay, and... day-and-date release. I was wondering if you were thinking more about, like, uh, like, like older ports coming up to the Switch. Or you're thinking, like, how we had Mortal Kombat both. 11? Okay, okay. It's gonna be a, I, think, I think we're going to see a mix of both. I mean, we could start with something as simple as, like, Ori and the Blind Forest being confirmed for Switch. Sure, okay. And then we're just going to see, you know, maybe, like, the Witcher 3 port finally get confirmed. Mm -hmm. And we're yeah. going to see a lot of, like, Japanese studios come up with some okay. new announcements. Might see, I mean, Western still doesn't seem that big on Switch. Like, EA just doesn't care. Yeah, they need to. As soon as they announce Madden, it'll be pretty obvious they were they had to start caring. Um, but right now, no, Madden came out on everything, and they're super stingy now with the Switch. It's ridiculous. It's weird. Yeah, I think they put it on cell yeah. phones too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but they just put FIFA on there. Like even NHL, which I thought would have been something they would just thrown on the Switch and be like, "Here's NHL." That doesn't even make the jump. So uh, I think this is also their now or never chance to announce the Switch port of Spyro. It's yeah. it's getting pretty close yes, to please. the uh, the inside date of when it's supposed to release around, and mm. the the PC version was just rated uh, this morning as of recording this. So, yeah. uh, it, which means I I, I wouldn't see them releasing the the PC version the, a different time as the Switch version, and the rumor is that it's going to be mid August is when that comes out. So, I think at their direct. Even if it's just like a brief mention of how they did Crash Bandicoot, like, let's get that out there. It's a quick announcement. Mm. Put it out. It's been talked about for long enough. People have been waiting for it long. It shouldn't have even taken this long to get it on the Switch. Um, there are rumors it was supposed to be back out in, in April. So okay. Okay. Uh, that'd be a great announcement, at least for everyone to uh, leave me alone about it. <laughs> <laughs> While we're on the topic of third parties on Switch, though, and you'd mentioned the Japanese developers, one other thing that I'm thinking of is, you know, Square Enix has a really big conference this year that's at the same time slot that Sony's normally is. Mm -hmm. And we're expecting a lot of things during that Kingdom Hearts 3 DLC, probably more Final Fantasy VII remake stuff. One thing I'm thinking about that I think they might be able to port over to Switch would be Nier Automata. Ooh. I could see that because yeah. that's a game that sort of fits with that audience of, you know, it's it's been out for a while. They might want to resell it again. Uh, I think there was recently like a Game of the Year edition or something that they yep. came out with. But I yeah. feel like they could just release that version on the Switch and announce it during the Score Enix press conference. Yeah, I think that would work so, well. Yeah, that was on my, uh, I wrote down big third party game announcement <laughs> on my predictions. And Nier Automata was on there. Uh, nice. But like, I think... Uh, they they usually like to do one big one. So I said like a big third party game really announced. Like now the hot the hot rumor is Witcher three. I think that definitely does kind of fall in line with uh okay a lot of people wanted this but they didn't really think it was likely and now it's uh, like it's getting rumored all the time. So people are like oh okay that makes sense or something like that. Right. But uh, I said something like uh, there could be like a Kingdom Hearts reveal, not mm. necessarily three, but it could be like the the collection of the first two games or maybe just the first game like the hd remake of that who knows uh grand theft auto 5 is Ooh. always kind of like people oh, really yeah. want that mm -hmm. and that released on 316 ps3 but i feel like the amount of space that's gonna take up that might be a problem they, uh for carts yeah. and downloading and all that they would, they uh, and would then have how are they gonna even do the witcher 3 like that's yeah. <laughs> that's another one that about. I'm like I have no idea. I think Nintendo Nintendo I assume would have to step in and do some kind of publishing or something with carts to make that work because they yeah they probably need a 32 gigabyte cartridge for either of those games definitely. Mm -hmm. But yeah. uh, one of my predictions uh, kind of concerning like it, it's going off of like the last two years because the last two years Nintendo has had uh, big third party announcements revolving around uh, big online multiplayer games. So 2017, we had Rocket League, and then 2018, we had Fortnite. I'd say we might get another more multiplayer-focused game, something like Borderlands or even Overwatch, because Blizzard just did uh, Diablo 3, and that I think that did pretty well. Yeah. Um, but it could be another year or so until we get like an Overwatch announcement, even if that would ever happen. Uh, and Borderlands is hot right now with Borderlands 3 coming out, so they yeah. might do like Borderlands. You're or Borderlands speaking my 2. language right there, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Overwatch Borderlands is a good language. One. Overwatch is a good one, man. That would Overwatch, actually... Overwatch is long overdue. Yeah, I, I would love to see too some type of Nintendo exclusive costumes with like Diva in a zero suit and her ship is the gunship, or you know something <laughs> where awesome. Junkrat's got uh, bob bombs instead of mm -hmm. regular explosives. <laughs> they could do a lot of really funny things. I mean, Donkey Kong, Winston, like you know the ideas just keep flowing. Paladins. Through, so. Paladins needs some competition. 
That's right. Mm. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It is interesting that Saints Row, Saints Row the Third actually seemed to sell, like it went up the eShop charts despite it being kind of a, a broken or a bad port. People still well, bought because it. Because people, so. people want Grand Theft yeah. Auto. So there you go. Maybe so, it is interesting that THQ Nordic got that thing out there before E3. So hey, maybe they uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe there's something going on in the background. I just don't understand how you release a game with more bugs than the initial 2011 <laughs> version had, but it, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's also weird. Like they went for three specifically, like not four, not two, not not one. It's just like I know. It's I just think weird. I, I, I had the same thought with two. Two, I think. Didn't they been the one like lose the source code of two though? Did they? <laughs> I think, yeah, I think they like <laughs> lost something. With Dude, what is it with these companies <laughs> losing source codes? My gosh. <laughs> or Final Fantasy VIII. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh. But also, like, for I Saints Row, like. That. Yeah. But, like, just Saints Row 3 somewhere. and 4 are completely different games from mm-hmm. 1 and 2. Like, they're practically different series. 4 had, like, superpowers and stuff. It's basically prototype. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, now, uh, you guys just mentioned Final Fantasy, and I just thought about something. Do you think it might be too little too late to announce a Final Fantasy 14 port to Switch? Uh, so here's the here's the situation with that, which is really funny because that pops up a lot, and uh, I'll usually cover it, uh, but I won't say anything about it because nothing seems to be changing with the story behind it. That the story mm-hmm. is the 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 person who worked to create the studio, and everything with Square, who created Final Fantasy fourteen, they don't have a problem bringing it over, but they want everything to exist in one world. They want all crossplay, so it's up to Sony basically, and I feel like Sony will forever block that because they don't uh, want that. Because to them, yeah. it's an advantage they have right now. Yeah, yeah. So that's I would love to see that. That'd be cool because we just got DCU, you know, DC Universe Online announced, and uh, why not? You know, bring fourteen over. So they're in this weird predicament where they don't want to have a whole other server and world on the Switch, uh, and Sony doesn't seem to want to let them have that uh, as Actually, one big world. Speaking of Final Fantasy. Here's a prediction that yeah. it will never come true. I want Square <laughs> to walk out and announce Final Fantasy VI uh-huh. in Octopath style Ooh. as a Switch exclusive. Oh my god. I'm going to double you... down what you just said. Please, <laughs> Chrono Trigger in Octopath style. Please. If they remade Chrono Trigger in that art style, I would I would melt. I would melt live on camera. Dude, that'd be insane to buy Chrono Trigger on a cartridge in like 2020. Yeah. That's... <laughs> They're I mean, better be like, like 10 years ago for the DS one. So. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Uh, man, that'd be awesome to do a full special edition for it and everything. Man, Square has I some ridiculous like. IPs that they're just not like using. Man. I feel like if they do a Chrono Trigger remake, they might do it in the same uh, way that they did the Secret of Mana one. Oh, no. Oh, never mind. <laughs> you know what? I take back what I said. That's oh, fine. Shoot. Square, you don't need you to think, do that. That's okay. Do you think Secret of Mana, that remake, is going to come to Switch? It has to. It, like, yeah. They, they kind of teased it. Yeah, I, I, I would prefer that. them to localize the collection over bringing that over. Yes. Oh, well, yeah, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they'll probably bring that over there just to disappoint me. No, I like, want the worst regular release that we got. Yeah, <laughs> why do you want that one? <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> no, they'll probably bring that over and leave the collection in Japan just to mess with me. But uh, that'd be they're cool. not going to put the time into localizing that. Yeah, uh, I mean, there's a whole game yeah. in there that never came over. Yeah, what's, what's, I would love to have an official release. What's but. hilarious is the the fans uh, who translated it and did it all the work. They sent them the letter and they were like, "You can just use it. It's fine here." <laughs> um, uh, man, I, Square is weird sometimes uh here's here's another prediction i i was thinking of i i feel like nintendo because we're coming up on september when people's uh subscriptions are coming up for their online service they're gonna work to add some uh some more value to that online service like they did with tetris 99 uh, except i think they might look at expanding the nintendo application which is what it's called now it's not called the nes application anymore apparently and they add either game boy or super nintendo games to that subscription oh, service shoot. so like uh did that did they actually update it recently does it say it's, just like yeah it just says nintendo they updated it like i think two or three months ago but i believe it really i believe it just hmm. says nintendo i can look at my switch real quick nintendo I'm, I'm, online <laughs> i think it it's just says like, like nintendo, nintendo entertainment system nes on no they yeah, have a just, they have a whole section on their yeah. uh, shop that's just like Nintendo something. Like there's places to put more <laughs> stuff, but yeah, the app is like Nintendo Online or something. Um, people they, were pointing that out that they changed like some of the names for it and stuff and the code, and then on the on the uh, Nintendo Switch Online, and then under that is uh, uh, it's loading, and then under that, yeah, it says uh, they have the Nintendo Entertainment System, they have Tetris ninety nine, then they have a bunch of blank spaces with the uh, Nintendo Switch game vouchers. 
All right. Okay. <laughs> uh, I wrote down the prediction. I don't think, I do not think we are going to get like SNES or like anything like that mm-hmm. announced for that service during E3. I also think there will be like no new Labo news, no new mobile news, just because they don't, they don't talk about that stuff during like their directs mm-hmm. normally. Yeah. Um, I feel like, I feel like they probably announced that around the time of September, actually, when uh, subscriptions are going to be going up. Yeah. Because like a direct then, in August or something. Yeah, I feel like that mm-hmm. might be more likely than a D3, but sure. I, I'd love to see, like, I'd, I'd love to actually have a reason to use my Nintendo Switch Online membership. Yep. See, that's the thing. I think they uh, have, I think they have a hook planned, but when they actually, like, put it out there is the question, like you're saying. Right. Like, you know, they have some idea of Super Nintendo games because people found, like, they data mined it, they found some code for Super Nintendo games in that application that we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then it kind of disappeared after a little while. So they're yeah. definitely thinking about it, I think. Wasn't there some leak earlier this year about mm-hmm. like Link to the Past coming yep. to Switch? Yep, there were like twenty yeah. something so games go. in there, yeah, already, and then they disappeared. Which people are saying they might have moved it around in the code, or who knows? But uh, yeah, I think they definitely. I think you're right, Sky. I think they have it lined up for like just before everyone's like yeah. September rolls <laughs> yeah. around. Well, yeah. I think they probably have enough just of the garbage NES games they have left to make it up to that point because like what, what was the last month? Clue Clue Land, Donkey Kong Jr. Oh my gosh. And like versus Excitebike which is cool because like that's that's a more obscure like that was Japanese only and then it came but it over, it came over to the Wii U so it's just like this isn't the first time we're, we can play I, it. I, yeah. Um, yeah I bet they still have so, room to put uh, what you call it over? Um, the, Earthbound f- Beginnings? Yes they could still do yeah. that. Oh too. yeah. That would be that's nice. kind of like the last major one that people actually want Yeah, and there's like a bunch of garbage black box games that they haven't brought over there's like star tropics 2 as well Ooh. and that's kind of about it uh they don't really have but they could also like dive into third-party releases but a lot of third-party releases that were like the best nes games are either licensed stuff like the disney nes games or uh they're already available via collections like the Mega Man legacy collections and uh the castlevania collection that just came out so I don't know. There's not a lot of stuff going on with NES Online. There's not a lot. There's not much of a future, I think. So they're going to have to update that eventually with more systems. So you're telling me I should stop holding out hope for Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure to come to the NES Online well, service? Well, at I least mean, you're getting a new. There's movie. always a chance. But... Oh man! Any other uh, predictions we got? Um, let me look at let me look at my big uh, fat list. Here. I do have uh, uh, I, I think, do have dying I think we DLC. I think we got some <gasps> DLC for some Mario like... Odyssey. I, I was thinking more like Mario Kart 8. Ooh, okay, you know I'd be I'd be okay with that. I could, yeah, I could actually. I need to see, see like the art. Yeah, everybody the online says games that DLC like Mario all Kart. The time, but I don't know. They need I mean, some DLC to keep those. I mean, those games are still selling. Mario Kart 8 has sold like 17 million copies. Throw some yeah. DLC on there. No, 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 no. Days, no. You get online subscriptions. No, we need Mario Party update something, <laughs> anything. I it, this thing I is still think... on 1.0. So I actually think a Mario Party 2 might mm. be likely, a Ooh. Super Mario Party 2, just because yeah. they, they have been doing, so they used to do yearly Mario Parties back in the day. Oh my gosh, and I they forgot actually, about that. <laughs> They actually kind of got back into the swing of things with at least like Mario Party-esque news happening every single year. So like, um, let me think, Mario Party 9, when did that come out? 2012 and then 2013, mm. they had Mario Party Island Tour. Mm. 2014, they announced Mario Party 10. 2015, Mario Party 10 came out. 2016, uh, they had Mario Party Star Rush. 2017, they had Mario Party Top 100, and then 2018, Super Mario Party. So if wow. they keep up with this, I think Mario Party, Super Mario Party 2, or at least they would announce it. What if this they? Year. What if they do a Mario Party application for their online service, similar to what they did with Tetris 99? No way! They make too much no. money with Mario like Party. Like a free one, but not no like, like a multiplayer no. mode or something. No, that's way too forward thinking for Nintendo. Oh, sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry. <laughs> I really hope if they do, if they at least update Mario Party, mm-hmm. uh, Super Mario Party, or they announce a new sequel, I hope they fix some of the issues with Super Mario Party because that game had so much potential, but it it just kind of came out like it was fine. Yeah, it was it was very average. I I really wish the online was better for it. That's the biggest thing that yeah. hits me. Yeah, it, it was, was like it was anyway. better than the like, oh, the yeah. recent ones, but it was still like oh, man. Could you not so play fun. online yeah. on a board? Like, I don't understand. That's the one reason. Like, the mini games are fun, but you want the whole experience. But even then, I think, like, the mini games online, like, they only had, like, a select yeah. couple of them that yeah. you could play online. So even at that, like, it was incredibly limited. I think they figured, oh, you would you would quit before it actually finished or something. But I feel yeah. like if they sat down and thought about it, they could have come up with a way to accelerate it online or even make it so you can just play with your friends if you want. Yeah. 
Or maybe like when your friends drop out, then a CPU just comes in. Oh I don't yeah, know. there you go. Yeah. yeah. Well, wow. Like look, a... we just solved the solution in literally two seconds. <laughs> they just drop yeah. like a they just drop like a level like a level nine CPU in there. And just like good luck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be man. You could really mess with your friends doing that then, just leaving them in there with yeah. like a very hard CPU every time. <laughs> well, I've actually. Uh... Oh, go ahead. Oh no, go ahead. I was just going to say, I have a weird prediction about something that we talked about already, mm -hmm. but um, we didn't really go too in detail about, and that's the Link's Awakening remake. Okay. So I have a feeling, just because, you know, Link's Awakening, it's a great Zelda game, but it's still a Game Boy Color game in 2019. Uh, traditionally, with the handheld games, they've liked to add, like, multiplayer features. We saw this with Link to the Past and Four Sword, and we saw this with Triforce Heroes recently as well. I kind of feel like they're going to announce a multiplayer mode for oh, Link's Awakening no. at this E3. <laughs> That's the other hook that they haven't announced. Okay. And okay. either it'll be like a four sword mode or it'll mm -hmm. be something. But I think there's going to be a multiplayer component to Link's Awakening. Hmm. Roger, you swine. I just wrote that, I wrote that <laughs> no down. No way. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm had... so sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. I'm so sorry. Uh, okay. I had multiple. I said uh, they bring back the color dungeon from the, oh, the DX that'd be cool. one mm -hmm. and uh, possibly a new dungeon slash elements. And I said multiplayer revealed with a question mark. So... Yeah, I don't know. Because they do that. they do need to add more value to it just because it is a Game Boy game. It's a great Game Boy game, but it's still a Game Boy game. Yeah. I mean they got us all nostalgia alone for that game no matter what. Like they could have just showed us yeah. a title and we would all have gone out and pre ordered it. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's I definitely gonna be style. it's definitely gonna be sixty bucks though. Oh, so yeah, I think they have awesome. to oh, add sure. stuff. No question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Even though it looks like a very pixel for pixel remake overall with like the map screen. Mm. I mean the overworld map. So I just think they do, like you said, Roger, I think multiplayer could definitely work with that. And I think uh, maybe a new dungeon. And I hope they bring back like the well, color dungeon. While I, while I have you guys here on that, what do you think of the art style real quick? I like it. Yeah, I like me it. too. I think it's yeah. cute. Yeah. I'm so yeah. in. I, I want like a whole little like miniature figure set just of like like a, a top down screen of it to put somewhere because mm, yeah. it's, yeah. it's it looks like toys and i want to play mm -hmm. with them yeah i, I do yeah. like their yeah. style it's different i can enough. picture i can picture the etsy page for that right now <laughs> oh it's gonna it. yeah the yeah. the amount of money that's gonna generate for the etsy shops yeah. it's gonna be ridiculous <laughs> everyone's gonna uh, want a little chibi link yeah. uh i think uh I, I, yeah like i said i think they're definitely gonna show off a uh, new dungeon or the color dungeon from the DX port. Mm, okay. Uh, yeah. I'm. Yeah. I, I feel like it's gonna be updated in some form. I'm not. I'm not sold on the multiplayer idea. Like I see it, but I think the nostalgia power, especially for that one specifically. Like there's mm. so much love for Link's Awakening. Like I really think that they're just banking on the fact that they're porting it. They're giving it a really good looking fresh coat of paint. You know, it's not just like a lazy like whatever same pixels and stuff. Uh, I don't know if they're going to do anything that's like a more full mode. I think an extra dungeon is something more likely. Yeah. Okay. okay. You know, something that plays off of like having two Joy Cons. Like it's going to be something kind of gimmicky because that was part of the point of like the the DX dungeon is like, oh, there's color now, so you know, <laughs> it it plays a role in the dungeon. So I could see something like that. Um, I'm just I'm not sold on multiplayer. But then again, I mean, you know, the whole strength of the Switch is easy local multiplayer. So. Maybe it'll yeah. shut me up. I don't know. <laughs> just my main my main problem with Link's Awakening is uh, just the fact that it, it is very much still a Game Boy game because the geometry is very, very like, uh, you know, it is based on grid. So that's kind of oh. like my only problem is that it still looks like I kind of rather like they kind of smooth things out and make the world look a little more natural. But that I don't, it doesn't really matter that much. I wonder if they do anything crazy with like some of the really obscure things about that game, like like how you collect photographs and put them out on a printer. I want to see mm. work. I want to see Wart in 3D. <laughs> oh, please. It's gonna be please. Amazing. Kirby. We have to see the Kirby boss from yeah. Link's Awakening oh, as well. That'd be great. That's... Like, the more you think about Link's Awakening, it's more, it's so much more exciting to see all this stuff in, yeah. in a modern Zelda game. Yeah. yeah. Just see how they well, reimagine like weird... it. Yeah. yeah. It's like a weird crossover game before they really started doing heavier stuff like Smash Brothers. So it's, you know, it's really I mean, there's a thing too, you know, maybe they add stuff from later properties. To that oh, just that would be awesome. Or something. Uh, yeah. yeah, I could actually see them doing that. That'd be so cool. You know, you know, what's really funny is when they first showed that game, you could tell who, uh, who was around back then because there were people who were like amazed that Goombas were in the game. Yeah, <laughs> it was kind of funny when I saw it. I was like, "Oh wait, that's right." They had those like a while ago in there. That was like one of the first things I remember from that game was that they put like a, a Mario Goomba in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and the Chomp, the Chomp that's just hanging yeah. around in the city. Yeah, nice. well, I think Chain Chomps were originally meant for Zelda, and they put it on, they put them in Mario Three before mm. they oh, really? the Zelda game. I think. Don't quote me on that. 
Interesting. Already quoted. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's that'll be that'll be fun though. Any any other predictions for you guys before we uh, uh, um, start finishing shadow up? Drop. Oh, Something has a shadow okay. drop. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Let's finish up with that. What? Unless Scott, you had some other zany off the wall idea. I didn't. I can I can reword this prediction into a shadow drop. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I, well, okay. I have one zany one then. Okay. That's not a shadow drop that I'll I'll say first then. Okay. Um. I think one thing that people aren't really thinking about going to this E3 is, you know, the Switch is both a handheld and a home console. Mm. And part of me feels like there are a lot of handheld franchises that we haven't seen on a home console yet. And there's one really big one that sells a lot every time it comes out. And just based on the demand that I've seen for a game that's in the genre that just came out today on Switch, my prediction is that we are going to get a new Nintendogs announced at E3 for Nintendo yes. Switch, hmm. and that that game is going to come out this year. I don't think they're going to shadow drop it, but I think that game could potentially come out this year just because there is sort of this demand for a pet simulator, and it really wouldn't take that much processing power to have these really pretty-looking HD, you know, dogs and cats. Maybe they'll add bunnies or pet pigs or something. I don't know. They can go balls to the wall I mean, with it. But I think... dedicated Reddit pages for well, it. Well, so. I mean, that's the thing, though. The Switch is back kind of in the mainstream again, where people yeah. who do like those kind of games would, would pick it up. So, sure, you can't... They, they have to at least show up and think about that mainstream audience that they have again a back for the switch so yeah and i think nintendo dogs is most likely of those franchises but i wrote down on my little prediction list i said casual focused mainstream game nintendo dogs and then question mark tomodachi life we sports update Ooh. nintendo land 2 so some type of game like that so i think like uh i i think that is very likely but also I think Nintendo has just kind of been like uh, publishing third-party casual type games recently instead of making their own. Like they did Go right. Vacation and yep. then um, Fitness Boxing. So I would love that because I think Nintendo's casual titles are still like really great. Like they're actually like super fun. But, um, you know, like I, I almost feel like they're kind of moving away from that and they'd rather just publish third-party ones. But I think Nintendogs is definitely the most likely of mm -hmm. the bunch just because like Wii Sports Resort and stuff like that. I'd love to see a new one of that, but um, I feel like they just don't know what to name it. Me Sports <laughs> Resort. Just yeah, I love Me Sports, sports or Nintendo Sports or Switch Sports or anything like that. But yeah. I feel like they're like, eh, it's it's you know we or something like that. Just I feel like Nintendo's weird about it. Just the yeah. possibility of having Nintendo dogs, Chihuahua, and friends again, so I can take my <laughs> dogs, throw frisbees at contests, and watch them not catch it and look back at me like I'm the problem here <laughs> uh so uh nate you seem pretty excited about the shadow drop aspect why don't you uh why don't you, why well, you my, let us know my hope is that you we see ori get shadow drop Ooh, okay yeah Ooh, I'm, I'm on board with that i have bad. i have a shadow drop that you guys will never guess and i i'm hoping i'm right but go, go on nate that's, that's pretty much it. Okay, Ori. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Ori. That's kind of what I thought. Yeah. Uh, like, I Ori think... Shadow Drops, it replicates the Hollow Knight mm. from last year. That was aspect. a good Shadow Drop. That was a good Shadow mm. Drop, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think a new Dr. Mario for the Switch on the eShop, because we got Dr. Mario World coming out on mobile. Yeah. So that could get revealed during, like, the Treehouse. <gasps> I think Do they'd be, Dr. like... Dr. Mario Battle Royale. Yeah. Dr. <laughs> maybe, Mario I mean, maybe the Dr. That'd be Mario amazing. game is the, the Switch Online game. You know, we're talking about adding things to Switch Online. That could be a game they could just add for free like Tetris 99. Yeah, because we don't have, like, a newer Dr. Mario. I think the last new one they made was, like, for the 3DS. Mm -hmm. um, and then we had, like, Dr. Luigi on the Wii U. But they, they've been uh, very keen on, like, making at least a new Dr. Mario for, like, every new system. And we haven't really gotten that. We have Dr. Mario NES on NES Online, but that's it. So yeah. I think maybe, like, a modern Dr. Mario game for Switch might come out on the eShop. Speaking of Mario, what about this for the eShop? Because the later ones in this series were only on the eShop. Like the first one or two, I think, were physical, and then they just went all digital. Mm. Mario versus Donkey Kong comes back. Mm. That can probably mm. stay yeah. in the vault. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> the, minis, the minis will march again. They can release that on the 3D, yeah, that's where it belongs. Jordan was so excited about that, too, and everyone's like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> because it's the same thing every funny. time. <laughs> but it's been long enough where they, if they release the no, same. No, no, it hasn't been new. long enough. It has to be like 25 years before they can come back. Oh, 25 years? Yeah. Well, I have... I'll be old by then. 
Good. So That's why you'll have, have forgotten what you played. Yeah. Do you think so we're going to see uh, Mario and Sonic at the Tokyo 2020 <laughs> Olympic Games? Because oh, I got Oh, yeah. We could probably see that. Ooh. Yeah. That might, I think that's Treehouse. That is total yeah. Treehouse. They're going to show that yeah. off there and then. I don't think they're going to talk about it much at the direct. It might be the in like a sizzle direct. reel. That's it. Hopefully, it's not even at the Treehouse. Oh, man. Can, Nobody I, should be subject to have to yeah, watch so those actually, Olympic compilations. What were you saying, Kevin? Oh, so I was actually going to ask you guys something because mm -hmm. uh, something I've been kicking around in my head. And I, I think we've already talked a little bit about like what the big focus game could be this year and all that kind of thing. Like, are we going to see a lot of Animal Crossing? Are we going to see whatever? But uh, Nintendo the last few years has had a very heavy focus on their booth being heavily stylized on some focus title yes. of the year, right? Like mm -hmm. last year was Super Smash Brothers, year before that was Odyssey, then Zelda. Right. Uh, what's this year? Because like, I think I, I think we've talked a little bit about Animal Crossing probably being like the biggest thing on the docket, but like, it's kind of a very specific one and we don't even know if it's actually really coming out this year. It might be kind of like talked about a little less. Like what, if it's not that, what is I, I think I think they'll play it Luigi's safe. Luigi's Mansion Haunted Mansion. That, That'd be amazing. Oh, that would please. be amazing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, would be, I would legitimately be mad that I missed E3 if they had that Same there. here, yeah. yeah. I would love that. <laughs> but, Last uh, year's was cool. Like being there on like the little mountain they set up for the mm -hmm. Smash. Oh, yeah. I, I if think there was a haunted house. Come on. I think they're gonna I think they'll just play it safe and dress it up like Link's Awakening and they'll have like the raft that you can take a picture on or something like that. And oh, that'd be cute. Uh, I feel like I, I feel like that. Animal Crossing though. I think Animal Crossing that'd be is cool. the big one. Yeah. 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 That is that is people keep forgetting that is one of Nintendo's biggest franchises. Yep. Yep. That, that is, is yeah. a conglomerate of a franchise. And I yep. think like that makes the most sense. Now that's weird though, because I don't think Animal Crossing demos well. That is like it is like it is totally based on just <laughs> you playing it for forever. Yeah. yeah. Like playing it like a few minutes out of the day. So to have to go up to like a demo station and play it for 10 minutes. I don't think anybody who's never played an Animal Crossing game is going to be sold on playing for 10 minutes at E3. Yeah. That's the main I, problem. I've come up with a workaround for this. So basically, if they want to really highlight Animal Crossing, what they do is just like you guys mentioned, they build out the booth to be like an Animal Crossing village. But each of the houses in the Animal Crossing village is actually a demo station for one of the other games. So you basically have, you know how like in the old Animal Crossing games, you had the little NESs, then the houses, where yeah. basically you walk mm. around the booth and the booth is just miniature houses for the different villagers. And one house, you can go demo Fire Emblem. The other house, you can go demo Mario Maker 2 or whatever. And so the whole booth is just literally a village. <laughs> well, that that'd be fun, super, that'd, that'd be, be super amazing. cute. I'd love that. Yeah. I'd be I'm, also I'm really bad. mad I'm not there. Because <laughs> that's everything I've ever wanted. Is someone I'm, expecting shut them, up about it. I'm like expecting them not to have any central theme. Mm. There's a little yeah, bit of everything. Yeah, because they didn't. Just, they just when they announced it, when they announced their E3 plans, they didn't say like, tune in for the Nintendo Direct to watch 40 minutes of like a 20 of 2019 titles with a focus on blank. Like mm. they didn't say that. They just said yeah. 2019 titles. Yeah. And the past few years, they said, uh, 2016 will focus on Breath of the Wild. 2017 will focus on Mario Odyssey. 2018 Smash Brothers. Like they they made sure people knew that going in. I was still a little disappointed by that because, like, I wanted a little more variety, and hopefully this year we get that. But I think we will get variety, but they will mainly focus on Animal Crossing. I feel like I, I hope so because uh, so, I think people underestimate how big this is going to be. Like, I, I know people know it's a big deal, but we haven't had a consoleized version since like, eleven years ago. Yeah, yeah. So, like, yeah. this is a big deal. Like, it's great. It's fine on the 3DS, but like, we haven't had a full HD Animal Crossing. That can do so much more. I mean, we had don't we had the Mario Party ripoff one, which we don't mm. talk about, but <laughs> a, a full on big like this is huge. Like I think like this is going to be a flagship thing for them, and they're going to make it a really big deal. See, mm -hmm. I think Animal Crossing is huge. I just don't see them making it the prime focus of E3 because, mm. as was mentioned, it doesn't demo well. It's not something the Western audience is really going to care for that much, and I think that's where they need to throw in the variety of mm -hmm. you can highlight Animal Crossing. But you have to highlight Pokemon. You have to yeah. highlight Link's Awakening. Yeah. You have yeah. to throw an Astral Chain. You have to really make it an event about everything you have. Like, yeah, you can have you know three focuses, right? Yeah, because Animal like, Crossing just can't be the central theme of their direct. Well, I think I think the Western audiences care about Animal Crossing, but it's more so like they just want to play it. Like it's right. just like yeah. it's it's not this exciting thing. Like, of course, people are going to get excited if they see like a ten minute focus on Animal Crossing, where they're just like. Oh wow, you know, you, you can like do this now and it's just but it's just like to the general consumer watching that, they're going to be like who cares? Yeah. You don't I mean, look yeah. at those so much about Animal Crossing where if you don't get it, 
you're gonna say who cares yeah, but it's yeah. Just like yeah like a so, 20 minute focus in the direct because they're gonna be like great tom nook charges me a lot of money and i have to pay him <laughs> back to get it I, yeah. like, oh i can put a chair in my house cool <laughs> you, get off this and show me something you new. come you come home from work mm -hmm. to pop in animal crossing so you can work to yeah, pay to off your work. virtual your virtual <laughs> mortgage <laughs> I think that could genuinely be an issue for them, though, like showing this off at E3. Because I remember those old City Folk commercials where they had like two middle-aged women sitting in their apartments going, hey, let's go pick seashells. Okay. And it was like a three-minute long commercial of just <laughs> these people picking seashells and talking on We Speak. And it was atrocious. Oh, and man. my mom, who we the speak. only video game she plays is Animal Crossing, watched that commercial, texted me day of, and was like, why does the new Animal Crossing game look like shit? So I really feel like I really feel like they're gonna need to show off whatever the hook for this game is gonna be. And we haven't really even talked about that on this so far. Like, what do you guys think is the hook for guys, this new yeah, Animal Crossing it. game? I think it's multiplayer. It, what, what's up? No, I got, I got it. I got it. We're gonna go. We're gonna allow people to re-experience uh, the harshest point of life aside from having to pay down for a house, paying off student loans. Oh, man. Oh, no. Animal Crossing goes to college. <laughs> <laughs> Animal Crossing dorm life uh, coming to Nintendo Switch. So oh, I have uh, I have a good shadow drop here. Okay, I have to. I had to wind up for this one a little bit. Oh god! So here we go. All right, this is it. This is it. So last year, some people might remember that I actually predicted something that happened at E3, and I was I was uh, accused of being a time traveler, but. It's fine because it worked out really well. So this year, what I think is going to be the shadow drop outside of an actual game is actually going to be a demo. Okay. Okay. It's going to be a newly released game. It's not from Nintendo. It's actually from Capcom. I think they're going to show up as a shadow drop and they're going to announce Mega Man X9 and the demos on the eShop now. Whoa. I would lose my mind. That sounds real specific. I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know somebody? Very oddly specific. I may have I just would... ruined a surprise for everyone. You'll never. Well, you'll know obviously in, in a week or two. You'll never you'll know. Never know. Two... I'll make sure you know. when I'm doing my live reaction streams for the press conference, and I see Mega Man X9 demo coming today, I'll make sure to shout you out. <laughs> they have they have right. teased Mega Man X9 quite a bit. It's actually part of the Mega Man 11, or no, Mega Man Legacy X Legacy Collection 2. If you go in the museum, they talk about how his journey's not over. Mm -hmm. uh, and they have, they have done some teasing. Mega Man 11, I think, did well enough. Uh, if you remember, last year, I believe, uh, they showed Mega Man 11 and then said the demo was out now on the eShop. So, now, do you think... Like <laughs> so, like, when Mega Man returned originally with 9, they went, you know, they went 8-bit. Do you think they do the same here and make it 16-bit, like, X1 uh, through 3? I would or be would they do something like 11, oh, where I, it's more of, like, man. a cel-shaded sort of 3D look? I would, I would uh, want 1 through 3. I would, I would yeah, be okay. I'd be okay with 16-bit, but, man. Uh, because, like, the 8-bit uh, was super cool, but looking back, it's, it's kind of weird yeah. when you think about it. Like, you go from 8, and you go back to 8-bit. Yeah. And it's just, it's really weird. But, um, you know, I, I think X9 could get away with a 16-bit art style, but 11 needed the art style yeah. it got, where it's like, it's pushing Mega Man into the modern era. What it's not like, like, oh, Mega Man's just 8-bit. What if know? they went like a cel-shaded look? Hmm. I'd be down for I that. Could, I could it, do that. Nothing could look worse than a uh, Mega Man X X Seven. So. <laughs> that's correct. I oh, mean, gosh. anything could be. That's, it's all up from here. So uh, yeah, that's that's true. Mega Man X 9s level design can't be any worse than X 8s Yeah. <laughs> all I know is now is that you got my hopes up. So I'm either gonna be really <laughs> mad it's not announced, or I'm gonna be really <laughs> mad you spoiled it announced. I, 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 I almost I almost didn't want to even say it because I'm like, if this doesn't happen, I just I just yeah, that's it's all disappointment if they don't. <laughs> I think it totally makes sense for it to happen because Legacy Collection 2, Mega Man Legacy Collection 2 came out in like 2017 and then 2018 Mega Man 11 came out. So yeah. X Legacy Collection came out last year, so it definitely makes sense for X9 to come out this year. Yeah. That makes total sense. I would I would yeah. love for X9 to come out. That would be amazing. So mm. that's fine. That's my thought on a shadow drop as a demo. Uh, but I do still think we'll probably have a full game as well. Yeah. Well, I have I have a lot of uh, random little garbage predictions okay. here and there. So I have I have my standard predictions that I think could possibly happen. I have my big predictions <laughs> that will never happen, probably. And then my BS predictions that are just the stupidest jokes I could come up with at the moment. So uh, I think I think standard predictions, new game style for Mario Maker 2 revealed during the Invitational. OK. Oh, new, oh, like oh, they oh, show uh, off. 
What do you think it's going to be, though? New game styles at Galaxy? I mean, Mario 2 would make the most sense. It's Mario Maker 2. Mario 2 has been heavily requested. I would love another 3D Mario game remade for 2D. I always thought, like, even back in the Mario Maker 1 days, I thought it would be super cool to have a 2D style based off of something like Mario 64, where you have the blocky mm -hmm. Mario and stuff like that. I think something like Mario Odyssey would work fairly well in 2d and it would be pretty cool because you know you could capture things you could you know travel through new donk city and stuff like that in mm -hmm. 2d that'd be super cool but i think mario mario brothers 2 makes the most sense because if it was mario odyssey they would show that first off like they would they would be yeah. like you can make your own mario odyssey levels in 2d stuff like that so i don't think they're waiting to do that i think mario 2 would be much more likely it's not as like it, it obviously wouldn't have taken as much time as like a mario odyssey style or any other 3d type of style i think that makes sense now will it come at launch or will it come later i don't know but i feel like they might reveal something like that at the uh, mario maker invitational good guess yeah i like that i especially yeah, yeah. if like because they've, they've shown that off before right where they have in the in the grand finals you've got the two last people they could speed yeah. run through a level that they've they never seen anything Mario before too. Yeah. yeah exactly <laughs> amazing uh i'm gonna also say there's gonna be no character unveiled at the smash brothers invitational i just I feel like not enough people will watch that where they feel like it'll make sense to reveal this big character at the uh, uh at the smash invitational i think it's just People playing Smash Brothers, that's it. They're going to save their stuff for the Direct, or if they're going to do, like, a Smash Brothers Direct before E3, something like that, they do that. But, yeah, I don't think a new character or anything like that. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I just want to no, say, I, I, I do find it interesting that they're kind of, like, cutting out expectations for what they're going to have at this Direct. You know, like, they're like, all right, we, we think we're going to see Mario Maker there. Chop it off, give it its own thing. We knew that we're going to get some new info information about Pokemon, most likely just through Treehouse and maybe a little bit of mention in, in the uh, Direct. And nope, that's getting its own thing. So I find it really interesting that it's such an open slate now of like stuff we expect. There's a lot of room for so much more. Well, I'd be eyes. really annoyed. I'd be really annoyed if Mario Maker Direct because that's coming out in like two weeks after <laughs> the Direct. So I'd be like, I want to see stuff coming out, you know, like after the yeah. next few months you know so I, i'd be happy if they'd announce that there but mm -hmm. yeah I, I just feel like that opens up a lot more because like then we don't have to expect pokemon we don't have to expect this but there's a lot of other things there's third party stuff and nintendo still has a lot of first party stuff to expect so yeah yeah you know. it's gonna be interesting were you, were you just talking about mario maker 2 yes because <laughs> i just i just saw it pop up that it's not gonna have amiibo support what? Uh, I wait, really, wait, 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 so wait, wait. I saw that, but if that true? if the mystery costumes are still there, because yeah. they might not be linked to Amiibo, but if they if they aren't there, mm -hmm. that's a huge loss. I don't okay. think there's any costumes either. <gasps> that is really? that is the biggest. I was hoping and praying for eight bit Joker, and now that we're not going to get that, it just makes me sad. We're not going to get any of it. It's just oh. like, you can just bring it from the old game. Like why yeah. not? I didn't. Yeah, How this is interesting. They, I didn't, they don't, I mean, even if they have to get rid of the third party characters, that's fine. fine. But it's just like, just give the Nintendo like, you don't. they don't have to do anything with those. Like they own those. It's just mm. like, just bring those in. Like, why not? Interesting. I don't get the assets. Man, today yeah. is just a day of disappointment for Mario Maker 2. <laughs> maybe, I don't know. Maybe, yeah. maybe they have something lined up for Treehouse or something to show off. No wonder know. they buttered us up so much with that. Uh, that 15 minutes they're like, look, there's a story mode and multiplayer and all this stuff. And then they're secretly like, yeah, but costumes, no bow support. <laughs> I don't not even cool. get the costume. Like, okay, That's like I kind of expected. No I expected the <laughs> not being able to play with friends online because it's Nintendo. <laughs> but uh, I don't know the amiibo costumes. I'm just like, why? Like mm. that made so many levels work. Like that made so many more people like come up with cool ideas for levels. And it's just like. <sighs> It's announcing really Mario Maker 2 DLC costumes. They'll oh. announce Mario Maker 3. <laughs> it's just the costumes. <laughs> Head E3. That's, my, that's one of my big ones. Um, <laughs> but but for my other big predictions, uh, Kirby spinoff this year. Because oh. they've been doing yeah. yearly Kirby stuff. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think it's too early for like a Kirby platformer because we just got Star Allies and they just finished up, up uh, they just finished up updates with that. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe something along the lines of like Kirby Canvas Curse or the Rainbow Curse, Kirby Mass yeah. Attack, or Kirby Air Ride, which yes. would be oh, amazing. Please, please. Uh, please. Dude, if Thank they announce you. Kirby yeah. Air Ride 2 or just a, a, a remaster, 
I'd be oh, even okay original? with a remaster on a City Trial alone. Like City Trial was the original Battle Royale. You literally drop into the <laughs> stage you, on your warp star, you attack your friends, you pick up the loot after you kill your friends. Oh. Like Kirby Air Ride City Trial Battle Royale, please throw that up. I can't. As the it's Nintendo so Switch good. Please. That's, that's way too of an overkill. If that happens, it's done. I don't care about anything else at E3 from any other company. <laughs> Give me Air Ride in any form. We're, we're done. That That's so much of my like childhood having fun with that game. No, mm. I'm, that's done. It's over. They win. Yeah, I just don't know. Like Because like that game got kind of mediocre reviews when it came out. Uh, so I just think Nintendo like just kind of thinks nobody cares about it. But people dig city trial and the people love air ride mm. yeah i and say i actually love that today i stand by what you just said too because uh, a couple months ago just prior to going to japan nintendo came to my apartment to like show off joker stuff and jc from treehouse and this is on stream uh jc from treehouse is like playing smash with me and we're talking and i'm like you know what i'd really like I'd like another city trial. I'd like a new Kirby Air Ride. And literally the look he gave me was this <laughs> look of complete shock. Like, people want that? And, and my entire chat was like, yes, people want that. Yeah, so because you're probably I, right. Yeah, I just don't think people, they think people care. But that, 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 that's why it's in my big predictions. Because I don't think it's going to happen. Mm, but yeah. I don't know. I, if, if they see the want for it, it'd be, I don't see it happening this year. But... Yeah. I do want yeah. it. It's a very good, uh, very good optimal <laughs> choice. Really want um, that. I also said a new NES Remix style game, uh, maybe as a way to get people to want the online service. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> a Shadow Drop, maybe. A uh, new WarioWare, maybe. I don't know. I mean, I just feel like the Switch could do so much with the Joy-Con that they just don't do. Like yeah. about a new Wario Land. Now that would be pretty cool. I think the I last one was the Shake Land. It on yeah. Wii. Yeah, that was the last one. My so. favorite one is four on the the Game Boy Advance. That was my oh, yeah. absolute favorite one. And if the, we can get any form of that back, even if it's in the art style of Shake It, I'm down. Like Wario Land games are very underrated in my opinion. Yeah. Heck well, yeah. Shake It had a beautiful art style. Yeah. That game looks so good. Um, I said Sin and Punishment three just because why not? <laughs> 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 uh, Ever Oasis Switch port. <laughs> I don't know. Wasn't that a rumor Maybe. last year? Uh, it might have been. I don't yeah. know. I think that's more likely in like a direct later this year if it ever happens. But I feel like they actually like a lot of people really like that game. Uh, but nobody played it on the 3ds. So yeah, you know, it didn't do well. I don't. Yeah, and it's I different from like, it was a thing. where like the platform didn't do well. It's like 3ds sells well, so I don't know if. Mm -hmm. It's a weird one. Yeah. Hmm. And uh, I what's good here is I didn't. No one said anything about Paper Mario. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nobody wants a dark too. <laughs> I, I if they like actually people... bring Color Splash over to the Wii U, that would make it a much better game. I I feel like a lot of people just lost. I mean, oh, lost... no, no. If they bring it over to the Switch, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, I feel like I a lot of people bring it to the Wii U. like lost faith in that in that franchise now. Man. Well, I mean, it hasn't yeah. been good in yeah. 20 years. Yeah, just go back to the drawing board. Go back to the GameCube one and, and build from there. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I mean, uh, they've been doing a lot of Mario and Luigi stuff, but that just feels like filler on the 3DS. Yeah. Like that's just like, oh, we need a Mario game. Mm. Put out Mario and Luigi. That's kind of it. I so, felt like that uh, last Mario and Luigi, like the the remake of what three or whatever it was, was like so yeah. unnecessary. Yeah, because you can already play even... that game on your 3DS because <laughs> it's a DS game. <laughs> and to me, it didn't look better. I think the art style they changed it to in certain spots made it look worse. I was oh, like, yeah. this, this is kind of a weird thing to remake but okay hmm. <laughs> well, i think it was just because it was easy like they just were like yeah let's just put out a mario game on the 3ds <laughs> like we don't want this to die let's throw out that uh, luigi's mansion one sure all right that's fine yeah. you know, uh, i also i also think i'm gonna predict there will be nothing 3ds related that's, I, that's a good thing yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's done it's done it is it is over at this all point. right maybe yeah. like a very brief montage of what's coming out like what little left what's is on its way. It, what's left? It's just going to be a, a five second montage of Persona Q2. Yeah, Q, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Don't forget, <laughs> Persona's coming. You like Joker, yep, right? Look, that's, that's pretty Persona. much it. Mm, man. Do you think Doug Bowser is going to host the direct? Oh, this was the. This he has to show up. Yeah. I was going to ask this. Do you guys Thank think you. Reggie is going to be in this at all? Or do you think he's just. He didn't record anything for it? 
No, uh, he's, he's I think gone. the last okay. thing he recorded was the his goodbye video because yeah. you'd think he'd do something for like I don't know his final final day, but just kind of tweeted stuff and that was mm. about it. Yeah, maybe the tiniest cameo. I can't imagine it being like a major part. Yeah, they they haven't really been doing a lot of those skits recently. I mean, like it would be super funny if E3 opened up and there's a skit of you know Reggie handing over his crown to Bowser or something, and they play on a bunch of the memes. But I I don't really see that happening i do think doug bowser does need to take this as an opportunity though to be like hey i'm the new president it's so nice to meet you and to really show off his personality because he is a super nice guy like just talking to him at events it's clear that he really does love the fans and uh, i think once people actually get to know him they'll fall in love with him yeah he just needs, I mean, he needs, to, he needs to endear himself to the fans just lean into yeah. all the jokes and stuff don't take anything seriously that, that's why he needs to come out like reggie did yeah, exactly. Reggie's like I'm, I'm here to kick ass, and like if, if like that'd be amazing if if everyone's like, oh, we don't know much of this guy. He just comes out with a, like a, a major statement, and it's like we're here to really play some games, and like and he, but he needs to do that at Microsoft thing. You can't do that in a direct. It just feels it feels scripted. He should, it feels yeah, dude. Ass. If he shows up, at, at least, if he shows, up at they a could conference. film like a they could film like a video of him like leaving the the faucet on at Sony's headquarters or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that could do funny. something. I mean, like if he. Comes out like Microsoft's conference to be like, here I am with my friend Phil. We're bringing Ori, Gears of War, Halo, Forza, Banjo, Viva Pinata, all this stuff to switch in our new friendship. Oh, yeah, we're bringing like Perfect Dark and Golden Eye. People said to say, Man. wow, Bowser is the greatest president so, of yeah. all time. You know what? The more you the more you say that, the more I think he is going to show up at Microsoft. You know, Nate, stuff. you bring something up that's very interesting. I was going to possibly say this for the Microsoft predictions video I was going to do at some point, but. What do you think the odds of them, because they're probably going to show xCloud on their stage, what do you think the odds are that they pick up a Switch when they move between devices and play xCloud on that? Hey, hopefully high, but I mean, I mean, that's amazing. tough to say. That nah, would be interesting, really wouldn't it? I mean, it'd be awesome just to sit there and be like, or what if they what if they walk? I'm playing Gears of War five on my on the Switch. Yeah. What if they walk to part of the stage and like the lights go on and Doug Bowser's sitting there playing X Cloud on the Switch? <laughs> That'd be wild. Dude, well, he has to come. That. He has to come up from the ground in the sports car. <laughs> <laughs> they both come out the sports car together, one door. Oh then lifts man, that would be great. Like we're playing Forza Horizon together on X Cloud. It is a it is a good chance for Doug Bowser to like introduce himself and kind of take over part of the direct. So yeah, yeah. he already shows yeah. that he has a decent sense of humor because he like posted a, like a few pictures on Twitter about you know poking fun at the fact that his last name is Bowser and stuff like that. So I feel like if they just you know like, uh, reaffirm his kind of uh, his personality on screen, I think that'll be yeah. that'll be pretty big because like uh, we never saw uh, Kimi uh, Kimishima that much when he was president. Uh, he was only at the Switch presentation. Um, and then, uh, the, the new one is Furukawa. Is that his name? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, he hasn't appeared at all. So like, who knows? Maybe he could appear, um, in the direct, but, uh, I, I hope either one of them does kind of like show off this kind of like playful or funny personality, uh, personality. Yeah. That would, that would be good to, to do that. Like I said, Bowser needs to definitely introduce himself. So yeah, mm-hmm. why not do it there? Um, mm-hmm. I guess that's, I guess that's everything. Is there any other closing remarks you guys wanted to make before we finish up uh i I think (laughs) i think nintendo's e3 itself disappoints i think third parties save them interesting okay 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 uh i'm i'm excited to be entertained but i'm not like oh man this is gonna be a huge e3 like i just i feel like there's a good amount of variety there and i feel like it's gonna be entertaining uh i i hope i'm not like sourly disappointed nothing can be worse than 2015 but uh, <laughs> uh um that's the I don't spirit know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i just hope there's a good amount of variety there's like two or three new games they show off first party wise yeah and i just want animal crossing that's all i want out of this. <laughs> like, yes show me some fun cute little animal crossing things and i'm good to go so for you roger oh, as I long will. as animal crossing stays on track for 2019 like you're good you're seriously you're good. yeah okay okay <laughs> I, I think there's a lot of people uh, yeah. are on that on that train, yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. And I think for me, like this year, I I'm just going in with open mind. I don't know what to expect. Like I, we talked about a lot of possibilities, and there's a lot of stuff on the table, but there's, the, the, I don't feel like there's a super hard central theme to this year. And so, 
I'm just kind of going in and see what happens. And it's either going to be a weird variety of things and it's fine and it's exciting, or maybe there's a surprise in there somewhere. I don't know. It's, it's kind of a weird year compared to the past ones. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Well, that's, yeah. uh, I guess that's going to do it for our prediction show here. Thanks to uh, Scott, the Waz, Rogers base, Kevin Kenson, Jordan fringe and Nate from direct feed games. You guys got to check all of them out. Their links are down in the description. And if you're listening on to uh, on SoundCloud or iTunes, make sure you run over to their channels and check them out. Uh, that's going to do it here. Thanks guys for joining. It was a lot of fun. Of course, having me. Uh, Pleasure was all mine. And uh, we'll see you guys. E three is coming up. I'm sure a lot of these guys also have a lot of stuff to say online and everything as well. So you should have some fun, and uh, have everyone have fun at E three.